All right, guys. Who is yet to log in by show of hands? Okay, well, while you guys are getting logged in, I'm going to begin this discussion so that we can get in, learn some great stuff, and get out. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, good morning. Morning. Hi, uh, my name is Brandy and I am from Hobson's. I will be delivering um, this relatively short day of training, all right? So before we get started, you're a larger group than I had yesterday and I like to know names and faces. Yeah. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go around with the swiftness. You're gonna tell me who you are, what you do here, and your favorite food today. I will demonstrate. Y'all paying attention? Yes. Right, my name is Brandy Savage. That's my real name from birth. <laughs> I am a training specialist with Hobson's, and today my favorite food is butterscotch pudding. Providence Wood Fire Pizza has some bomb pudding. I had it last night. You should try it or change your life. Try the yeah. wings. I'm a big fan of the wings. I know, I know. Just, you know, but the, the, the pudding was great. Okay, so I'm going to start at the back this time. I'm going to switch it up. So I'm going to start with Miss Esther. Um, Esther Jackson, student services, and um, my uh, food today is uh, my mom's vegetarian pizza. Ooh, mom's pizza. Okay, I like it. Wonderful. Hello, Tracy, our local coordinator. Okay. Mac and cheese is my bomb. My little. That's just mm -hmm. Can't go wrong with good mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you, Tracy. All right. Gina Bianca, I'm the associate dean here at Director of Power Legal Studies. And my favorite food is whatever Tracy brings me for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you bring us for lunch? <laughs> Tracy. I get whatever she gives me. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. Okay, I like it. Uh, Marcus, your turn. Uh, yeah, Marcus, your <laughs> bachelor mission from the other campus. Um, and I love anything Thanksgiving. I think it's yeah, all the questions. We had that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Don't see it. All right, hello. Hi, I'm Pamela Carrera. I'm an advisor here at the school. Uh, my concentration is paralegal studies, but I dabble in everything. And my favorite food is whatever Richard brings me for lunch. <laughs> this is such a oh, great oh, idea. Oh, givers. Oh, oh, most days you don't eat them. Or whatever <laughs> Jeannie brings me for candy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi, my name is Joanna Yuso, I'm a missions counselor. My favorite food today and always is my mother's out of and chicken pollo misado. Yes. Sounds yummy. I love, when mom, I love when someone's mother's food is their favorite food. It just warms my heart. Is that meatloaf? That's chicken stew. Oh, okay. Rice, yellow rice, and now uh, pigeon peas. Yum. Mm. Yes, All thank right. you. Hi, my name is Nadej Sassano. I'm the marketing manager here, and my favorite food this morning is jackfruit. Oh, jackfruit. Wow. What's that? Breakfast. It's a it's like this huge fruit from I think it's like something like that. Oh my god. Okay, I'm at the top. Never had it. Yeah, All right, thank you. Hi. Uh, hi, good morning. Um, I'm Adriana Dawson. I'm the assistant dean in the School of Continuing Studies here in our province campus. Uh, I oversee our Center for Workforce and Professional Development. Um, and I'm really digging soul food. Okay. You know, some sweet potato pies, some chicken and waffles. Mm -hmm. All the good food. I'm right there with you. I'm a uh, program director. My favorite food right now and always is a quarter store and bodega. Bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get anywhere but well, Dirty Corner Store in New York. Ah, uh, yeah, wow. yeah. You got to. They're the best. Road yeah. trip. Love it. Okay. <laughs> Hi. My name is Natalie Nascimento. I am a full-time advisor here. Mm -hmm. um, currently advising students in the criminal justice study from the Home Arts and Individualized. And um, I don't really have a favorite food because I pretty much like anything. But for me, it's something I've been eating, something that I've been making a lot. So the Facebook, the recipe on Facebook, uh -huh. it's called um, Cowboy Caviar. Okay. And it's, a, it's, with, it's what I made for a potluck with the beans, um, guacamole, and 
other kind of beans, black beans. It was really good. Cowboy caviar. Yeah. What's up? All right. What's the big hit? Don't make me Bill? Yeah, I'm filming this uh, advisor here in the TLM program. And favorite food just went to the original Italian bakery and got pizza chips. I love them. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is the yeah. <laughs> The original Italian bakery. I know. I really love it. Yeah. I'm doing it Yeah. Okay. Let's try that, too. I'm learning all types of new stuff today. We should help me on part-time criminal justice. Okay. 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 It's a long, long list. Give me, just give me one. Pizza, all kinds of pizza. All pizza. Everything. I had pizza last night. It was delicious. Yes. Awesome. All right. And then we the My name is Jimmy Gashan. I'm a student advisor here. My favorite food is roasted chicken from DJ's. Really? Yeah. Okay. Scoops. Roasted chicken from DJ's. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. All right. All right. Skinny folks out of it. Okay. okay, hi, me? Hi. Yeah. Hi. Um, <laughs> I'm a boy. Yes. Um, my favorite food, bon chan Korean wings. Bon chan Korean wings. I hope y'all are taking notes for y'all playing out the real good food here. Yes. I like it. Yes. Wings, like now, add that to the list, too. There's yes. so much stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Octavia. I'm Karen Dyer. I'm um, in the business office, mm -hmm. and I like a ruble. I'll put it in that. I had arugula on my pizza last night. I love this. it. I put it on everything. You know, sometimes I like that pepperiness that you, know, you get from the arugula. It's just delicious. Yeah, the food was great. Hi. Hi, I'm Candace Ellis Reyes. I work with Andrea yeah. on CWPD. Okay. And my favorite food is my mother in law's ceviche and chipotle. Hi, Yeah, I like that. I'm so hungry. Yeah, I'm so hungry. Yeah, I'm so hungry. 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 I'm so I love it. I love it. Okay. So you are a large group and you all know each other. I can tell because you're talking to each other. That's not really going to do you a benefit here because I got all types of knowledge to drop on you today. Okay. Here's how this is going to work. Um, content wise, as Jeannie said earlier, I am hopeful I can get you out of here by two. You should be hopeful that I can do that as we well. We are too. Right? Yeah. Um, now, I know a lot about this system, but I want to give you a word of, of warning here. We are not complete with our business processes in this system. So I'm going to encourage you to ask questions. If not, once you're leaving here feeling like this was a waste of your time. You are going to be using this system, and I want you to feel comfortable at least knowing what it does. You are not going to be experts on this by the time you leave. That is not the expectation. Ideally, we want you to get comfortable and get you excited about what is to come, okay? Um, so with that said, ask questions. There's plenty of time built in for you all to ask questions. Some of these questions I'm going to be able to answer for you because they will be functional. Some of them I will not because they're going to be Roger Williams business process specific. And frankly, because you're new to the system, you probably don't have those ironed out. Marcus will put in what he can because he is a project lead on this. He's been working diligently with your implementation team um, to make this happen. So if you don't get an answer to your question today, know that it is something that we are working on, but still ask it anyway, okay? In addition to you asking me questions, I'm going to ask you questions like, do you understand and does this make sense? And you're going to look at me much like you are right now. I don't like that. Yay. I like verbal responses. So when I say, do you understand, you will say yes or no. No, no, no. no is also okay. I will take all of it because I want to make sure that you understand. Awesome. Uh, we are scheduled to break for lunch around noon. Um, my experience doing this, um, we tend to end a bit early, 1130, so you may get some extra time for lunch. Yay. You're going to have a mid-morning um, break. If we make it all the way through the afternoon, you'll get an afternoon <coughs> break. But again, we want to get you out of here in enough time. Um, so, you know, don't act like you have to hold stuff in because you don't. You can actually excuse yourself. You're adults. Things are happening. Um, I will ask you to keep the side conversations to a minimum. This is a very robust system, okay? And if you miss a big part of this, you will probably be lost in the way we continue. And I really don't want you guys to get lost, okay? Um, if you do have those questions, if you get lost, pop a hand up and be like, Brandy girl, I'm lost. What are we doing? And I will backtrack and make sure we're all moving together. 
Sound good? Yes. Yes. That was yes. a yes. terrible show. Yes. 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 Sound yes. good? Yes. 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 All right. You're going to get it. I know it's early, but you're going to get it today, kid. <laughs> okay, so everyone is logged in or getting logged in into Radius, is that correct? Yes. 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 Wonderful. And we are not using Internet Explorer because it is the devil, right? Yes. 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 No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you're on your own in Internet Explorer, that's all I have to say. It gets a bit glitchy. Firefox tends to be the best, followed by Chrome. I'm going to be using Chrome today, okay? So let's get this party started. Can you, can you help Dawson log in? <laughs> I don't want to. For time's sake, just because then know he's. I got, I got the password. You sure? Yeah. All this no time worries. and you ain't been logged in? <laughs> What's the minute? I've been working on it. Then. Okay, you tell me what. <laughs> well, if you don't have it, let me know because I can reset your password to get you in. <laughs> no, she got it. Okay. <laughs> So first, welcome to Radius. Let me define what this is for you. So Radius is a relational CRM. The C in the CRM stands for Customer, Client, Constituent, Relationship Management. And in higher ed, our clients are our students, right? So the idea behind this system is to gather as much information about our students as possible through every touch point, right? From the moment they inquire and say, I am interested in attending a program here, at Roger Williams University, gathering the information on when they want to start, um, talking to them, recording those conversations, ideally pushing them through to the app. I know some of you are going to have your app posted here, some of you are not yet. Um, that will be housed in here, communicating with them effectively, and of course getting them to the enrolled stage. We want bodies in classrooms. This system is designed to help us move <coughs> students through that process with ease. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about um, first off is just a general overview of what is happening in the system, familiarizing you with some of the verbiage of this, also showing you where help documentation is because you will not remember everything I'm talking about today. Okay? So everyone should be logged in and you should be seeing something that looks similar to this, although not exactly this. One of the things that's really great about Radius is that there's a lot of customization and we're going to spend the first part of today talking about how each of you is going to be able to customize your user experience with this product. I heard a lot of different departments, a lot of different positions, which means you all are going to be doing slightly different things. Um, and Radius is really good at making sure you get what you need when you need it. Okay? So up at the top left, you should see Roger Williams University grad and continuing studies. If you don't see that, you are in someone else's information. Get out, retreat, back out. You don't want to touch it. Um, on the top, you're going to see a universal search bar. And so before I dig a little into this, let me tell you about the structure of this, this relational database. It's really important. It's going to help you navigate through this system. Uh, what I like to talk about when I'm talking to clients about this is referring to radius as a tree. We all know what trees look like, right? We got branches, we got trunks, it's swaying in the wind, they got leaves, it's doing all types of crazy things, right? But if you look at the basic structure of the tree, the trunk and the branches, we know that every single tree is going to have that trunk, right? That is the foundational piece of the tree. All of the major information comes up from the roots into the trunk and then is disseminated through the roots. Um, not the roots, through the branches. Kind of crazy. Through the branches. So when we're thinking of that tree and we're trying to relate it to radius, we first have to identify what is our trunk. What is our foundational piece that every single student is going to have in here? And that is going to be the contact record. So if you're looking up at the search bar, you'll see that drop down defaults to contacts. Does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So that is your tree trunk record. Every student is going to have a contact record. Now what information is going to live on that record? Well, the basics, things that live with the person, like who they <coughs> are, where they live, how do I identify them, veteran statuses, what is their intended program, when are they thinking about coming and enrolling here? All of those things live with the student and can be found on the contact record, okay? Every student in this system will have at least a contact record. Now, that's just our trunk. It's a pretty barren tree at that point. Now, if you click that drop down, what you will then see are all of the branches of information that a student can potentially have. Okay, so big branches like the application branch, 
What are the requirements for my program? Do I have an application fee? Are there recommendations for that? What form are they filling out? Now luckily, you guys don't have to make those decisions. They've already been made for you and brought into the system. Um, but those are really important smaller branches connected to our bigger application branch connected to our tree trunk. Makes sense. And if I scroll through here, I'm going to see things related to other things like events. So are we hosting open houses and info nights? And we want to be able to record that information in the system and see it on well, the student. So that's another big branch. Um, another one. Um, you'll see something called cases and case messages, so documenting individual interactions or conversations we're having with students. Being able to recall that information and making sure it's transparent across everybody who's potentially working with that student. Okay, All of those are branches of information connected to our tree trunk, so it makes up this really whole tree of the student. Make sense? Yes. Yes! That is good. Um, so, scrolling through this list, you'll see there are lots of branches. Now, we're not going to cover all those branches today because, frankly, you don't need to know all the branches. We're going to cover the primary branches and the tree trunk that you guys need to be successful. And then, of course, as you grow in this system, you'll be exposed to more and more branches of information. Okay? Now, primarily, um, what you're going to be using this search bar is, of course, to search for students. So, you're not going to have to change any of those drop-down items. You'll be able to search for the tree trunk and then see everything in that student's tree. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that as we progress through it. Next to that, you'll see a support menu. Now, by a show of hands, how many of you have a Compass login? Yay to that. Good morning, Emily. <laughs> That's okay, because if you don't, we're going to get you one today. Woohoo! Um, so, for those of you who do not have a Compass login, and you're like, I have no idea what you are talking about, Brandy Savage. Click on any one of those four links, and it's going to open up in a new tab. And it's going to take you to this page. And so, if you don't have one, what I would like for you to do is under the sign-in <coughs> button where it says New User, click on that, and then please begin filling this out. Your client ID is Roger Williams, all one word. So while you're doing that, let me tell you why you need access to this, okay? And I'm going to do that just by going through the menu items. So the first are, oh, go ahead. Esther, you okay? Um, I just want to know how to get to the Compass login. Any one of those links where you can support. Okay, thank you. I don't know, I can't log in. Oh, that's why I can't see what is your name? Ami um, e. Shelton. A. Shelton at rwu.edu. It's up the second one. Your password is now Shelton all over the case. I don't. It's saying that it doesn't have, it's saying that, that invalid email address. A. Shelton at rwu.edu? Well, it's there. I know, it just doesn't have it. I have Compass, but I forgot my password. Oh, so you can just do the forgot password link to it. Oh, I can't change the password. Are we in? Yes. Yeah. What I wanted to change my password was saying that my email was invalid. We're good, though. Who knows? Wait, what's the client ID, please? Roger Williams, all one word. So your username would be your for Compass? Yeah. Um, it can be the handle of your email, so instead of the at rw, you gotcha. just the very first part. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so here's why I'm making you do this. You don't need to use the at sign. You just need to do the, it just needs to be the first handle of your email. So you're having to set up the training, the Compass training things? Um, I'm having you set up a Compass account, yes. So if you already have one, you don't need to do this. I did mine last night, but I haven't got the email back saying I have it. It takes about a day. Okay. So 24 hour time. Are you admin the password for Compass? Nope. You have to do your forgot password link. Do we push sign up? Mm hmm. So are you resetting? If you did this within the last 24 hours, it does take about a day before we confirm you are real and not a nefarious being trying to steal all of our trade secrets before we actually send you a password. So if you did this like last night in the afternoon, you just haven't gotten your email yet, that's very normal.
Okay, so while you guys are doing that, here's why you need this. So the first thing are your support cases. So after I leave today, you'll be like, I think I have a good understanding of stuff and things in this system. And you're like, but I think this is broken. It's my attention is, is great, but this is not working the way I need it to. Um, support cases, yes, sir. What's the client ID number? Client ID is Roger Williams, all in one word. No number. Mm -hmm. So support cases for when you need help from Hobson's, there will be a record of all the help that you have received from us. You'll be able to communicate directly to a support person um, and be able to get that handled lickety split. Second, most important part of Compass. So again, after I leave today, you will probably at most retain about 40% of what you learned today. That's a very normal thing. But you're going to need to know 100%. So how do you get up to that percentage? Well, there is the knowledge base that has helpful articles as well as training videos on the functionality of this. So don't worry if you don't remember how to do everything. You can go into Compass. You can print off the directions. You can watch the videos. My voice is on half of them, so it'll be like a warm, fuzzy blanket welcoming you back into Radius. It'll be fantastic. So okay. Compass is, is all the support for the radius? Mm -hmm. okay. As well as the knowledge base for it as well. Compass is everything. Next, product suggestions. So, um, Hobson's does a really good job of building, right? But we don't do what you do every day. I am not processing apps. I am not admitting students. I am not recruiting. I haven't done that in a really long time. Um, so when you're in this and you're working, you're going to say, wouldn't it be great if Radius did this? And instead of just wishing, hope, and praying, you gotta let somebody know so we can make some changes. So product suggestions allows you to type in, put, submit your suggestions about how Radius can be better for you and what you do every day. So not only can you put those in, but you can also see what other clients have put in and then vote them up or down. Usually about once a quarter, our developers come in and they give feedback like, hey, we're actually working on this right now. It'll be coming out and release in the next 30, 60, 90 days. Maybe we don't have enough info for this, so we're not going to work on it at this time. We need more people to vote on this. Or maybe it's something we've already put in the process um, that's in the system and you just don't know about it. Either way, we try to give you that feedback and we welcome the feedback. About 85% of our product developments come from client feedback. So be very, very vocal about how we can make this product work better for you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So um, under product suggestions, like that first post that says the email edit window is so small, mm -hmm. the vote up or down is the promote or delete? Promote, yep. The, yep, the exactly. <laughs> Finally, my personal favorite part of this is the collaborate function. So again, Hobson's people know the system very well, but it's been a long time since we do what you do. Wouldn't it be great if you could talk to people who do what you do and are using the systems that you're using and say, how can we do this better? Um, school for Continuing Studies, Law School, School of Business, right? We have all those types of clients in here. Talk to them and say, hey, we are new to Radius, and this is what we're thinking about doing. Has anybody done this successfully? If so, how? If not, tell us what we can avoid or how we can work around this. Talk to people who do what you do. Don't just rely on Hobson's. Rely on your community <coughs> of people, and you're going to find all of that in Compass. So for those of you who have created your login today, again, you'll get an email in about 24 hours with a password link for you to set that. Again, we have to confirm that you are real and in radius, okay? Yay team. Okay, next is support, back in radius. So uh, Compass should have opened up in a new tab. Go to the Hobson's radius tab in your browser to get back to this page. You all there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go to the setup link. Now for most of you, you're not gonna spend really any time in here, but it's important for you to know this. When you all purchased this product and began implementing it, we give you a pretty bare bones system. I like to think of it as a framed out house. I know it's supposed to be a house, but it is not something you could live in immediately. During the implementation process, what your implementation team has done in working with Hobson's is made this framed out house into a home. Everything you are seeing here is really customized to you. The data pieces, your page layouts, what you call things in this system, what access you guys have. That is all dictated by you. 
which means as you are growing in this system and you say, hey, wouldn't it be great if we collected this data piece on this type of form, or we need to create this type of form, or I need to update this application. You don't need to talk to Hobson's to do that. That is something that you can talk to your administrators, Marcus, et al., <laughs> um, that they can say, okay, we can build this, and it could be reasonably done um, the same day. Okay, and so I'm telling you this because it's not gonna be your job to do this. You, frankly, none of you actually have those permissions to do this, but it's important to know that it can be done because as the end users, this is really gonna be shaped by how you guys use it. And when you see areas of opportunity, speak up so that we can make this work for you. For those of you whose passwords I reset today, this is where you're gonna come under the personal settings and you're going to change your password to something that is not your last name so that it can actually be secure. Okay? Also, for those of you who will be sending communications from Radius, you'll see under that change password link, there is an opportunity for you to add an email signature, much like you would do in Outlook. Now, Marcus does not have one. I'm logged in as Marcus today. Marcus doesn't have one um, yet, uh, but if you wanted to put one in, that's something you can do at any time. And you'll also notice at the bottom, there's a checkbox if you are gonna be communicating a lot with students where you can auto insert that signature for any outgoing communications that you send. Also, for those of you who want to update your security question, so it's not what is your last name, because again, that's not really secure. Uh, if you go to account information, you'll be able to do that as well. I'm not gonna click on this because this is Marcus's information. I don't wanna put all of his stuff on blast, um, and, but just know it's there. Okay. Um, now, back up to the top right, next to setup, you should see your name. Again, I'm logged in as Marcus, that's why his name is up here on my screen. And if I click the link, um, the arrow next to that, I'm going to see all of the stuff you will probably never use, like the site map, the terms of use, privacy policy, and the ability to sign out. All of the legal stuff that we have to give you um, that unless you're really bored, you're probably never going to look at. But it's there. Okay. Question. Yes, ma'am. Do you have to sign out? Do you have to go there and sign out when you're done? You, I would advise you to do that, yes. Okay. So that's important. Yes. All right. It will automatically sign you out after... Um, so many minutes of inactivity, which can kind of be a pain in the to be quite honest, yeah. but it will auto sign you out, and it's not a really long time for it to do that. But especially if you're on computers like this in a lab, yeah. you definitely want to sign out so right. that no one can get in. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is there a way to um, change that time frame in which it signs you out? Nope. Okay. <laughs> so you have to log back in every time? Yes. Yeah. And there's no reset on that? No reset on that. Yeah. It's for the security of the data of our students. Keep thinking that when you get frustrated with it. Okay, uh, great questions. So underneath that, in this dark blue bar, you're seeing tabs here that house our branches. So this is going to kind of get you thinking, okay, what branches or what modules in this system are related? Now again, we're not covering all of these in depth today, because frankly not all of them are ready for you. But uh, I want to give you an idea of what you have and you can see. So first, let me click here on Contacts. So under the Contacts tab, these are things that are related to a person or a student in the system. So what records are related to the person? Well, first, you'll see the contact record, the tree trunk. We'll be exploring that in depth today. Um, all that information is going to be housed there. Organization. So as um, graduate school and continuing studies, you probably want to know where students went to school before they came here, right? So we are able to create a relationship between another school and a student, say that they were students there in the past, they're currently students there. We also have the ability, if you care about work history, saying that these students worked at these organizations and that's something that's housed under their record. So you'll always be able to see that, complete transparency, if that's information you're interested in collecting. Um, ignore life cycles, that's not something you guys are using. Marcus, can we make a note to remove that? Um, location, so where um, things are held, namely events, um, and tasks. So these are internal to-dos, and we will explore those a little bit later on in the afternoon about what those are and how you guys can potentially use them. I got a question. Yes. Is this where you go to find somebody initially? Ish, yes. Ish? Ish. What's ish? Ish. <laughs> Find, find someone are, ish. What you will find it in Radius is there are multiple ways to do the exact same thing, so it depends on what okay. you're looking at. 
I got it. Ish. Keep going. <laughs> But you could do it. No, she's asking. Great. No, I know, but I, you know, I want to get something out of this too. She's gonna. She's asking. I might be answering the question you're thinking about. Asking me too. You know, embarrassed to ask. Her. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Um, you will be familiar with these when you start to app process applications. We're not covering that during today's session Why? because I know uh, we made an executive decision and that's because frankly it's not built out enough um, for I think we felt for you guys to really gather as much information about it as possible. You will have a subsequent training session on that when it's ready and rolled out for you. So don't be too disappointed with that. Um, inquiries, inquiry forms, we're going to touch on that here in, in mere moments. Um, we'll walk you through what it's like for a student when they say, hey, I'm interested in your school. Send me information, harass me with phone calls and mailings. Yay. Um, events. So again, I talked about um, any type of events you want to host that you want to know if students um, are attending or registering for. You're able to host those in here, um, record that information and see uh, when they register and if they have attended. Yes, ma'am. I'm a student. How do I get out of it? Home, home. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. So you always go, but there's no clothes. You just go back to home and it erases the student. Oh, it doesn't erase anything. I mean, it just takes you off of that record page. We're going to talk navigation here in a minute. <clears throat> uh, mass communications. So emails either sent out automatically or um, one-off blast emails. Hey, our application is closing next week. This is your last time to get those in. Any of those can be sent from this system as well. Cases. So I understand some of you are on the social work or have history in social work side. Not those types of cases. More so documented conversations that I'm having with an individual student. For example, if Jeannie was coming and saying, I want to know stuff about this school, and we had a really great conversation in which she told me about her hopes and her dreams and her fears and all that fun stuff, and I felt that was important to the admissions process or moving her through, I would probably document that conversation via a case so that anybody can come and see the notes on that conversation that Jeannie and I have. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And again, we're going to go through that in depth in the afternoon. <coughs> Analytics, um, reporting, you guys are not going to have too much use of this. Frankly, it's not built out enough for the things that you probably want to do. So I am going to show you how to do those, um, some ad hoc reporting needs. Um, oh, I don't have really. Really. Oh, good. So then just ignore that. Yeah. Good times. Um, I'm going to skip over Quick Create, and I'll be very honest. I don't feel like it has a lot of value for what we do with students. In general, the more information we have, the better. Um, Quick Create allows you to get information in, but not enough really to do what you need to do. Um, I'm going to show you guys the longest way possible to do everything in depth so you can see the areas of opportunities that you have in building and utilizing the system to its fullest extent. Okay? So, what I'm now going to talk about is first, we're going to get you a student record in this system. And then we're going to talk about how do we find multiple records, okay? So obviously at the top here, I can search for an individual student using the universal search bar. If, I, if Jeannie comes in, I know I've talked to her before, I can type up here, Jeannie, Jeannie will pop up, and then I can document to my heart's content. But for what I do on a daily basis, maybe I want to see all of the applications that were submitted within the last week or all the new inquiries for my program, or maybe a whole list of people that I need to contact today for various reasons. How do I find that? Well, that, my friends, is what we call a view. So if you are a note taker, this would be an excellent time for you to take some notes. So I'm about to give you some definitions. You ready? Yes. Yes. All right. So what we're going to talk about here um, is the criteria builder that is used to build views and targets. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. We're going to focus on views, but the functionality that you're learning is also going to be applied to targets. So first, let's define what a view is. A view in RADIUS is a list of records used for internal workflow processing and reporting. Okay? Again, a view is a list of records. Those records can be contacts, 
events, event attendees, applications, etc., etc. Okay? Used for your internal workflow management and reporting. Does that make sense? Yes. Fantastic. Alternatively, let me give you the definition for a target. A target is a group of contacts that I am going to send mass communications to. Those mass communications are campaigns, communication plans, and event invitations. So again, targets are used to communicate to a mass audience. Yes, ma'am. So when you're sending out an email saying don't forget to register, is that a communications campaign? Yes. Okay. So again, targets are used for campaigns, communication plans, and event invitations. What's the difference between your campaign and your uh, communication? Campaign, one-time blast email. Communication plan, a series of automated emails and potentially cases. Do those definitions make sense to you all? Yes. Yes. You can easily see the difference, right? Yes. Targets are for communication. Views are for your internal workflow. You will be using views every single day in this system. That is why I start with it. Before we build a view, we have to have records to look for. So here's what we're all going to do. Every one of you, please go to the Inquiries tab at the top of your screen and click it. You should see one item there. It is Inquiry Forms. Click that. <clears throat> now, here is a collection of the inquiry forms that have been built on your behalf by your team um, with help of Hobson's. Um, these are things that are going to be either posted on your website or websites um, so that when students say request information, this is where that form lives and was created, and this is where the information is going to come. How about that? So here's what I want us to do. Does everyone see number four grad inquiry form, October 2016? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, you see a column that says form URL, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you on that number four line, right click on the URL, and then I want you to open that in a new window. What? <laughs> <laughs> Does everyone see what I am seeing on my screen? Yes. 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 Okay, so this, guys, is your inquiry form. Woo, team. So here's what we're going to do. We are all going to fill this out as fake students. But here's what I want you to do. When you're filling this out, obviously use your name. And in addition to your last name, please put the word delete. Marcus. Can I suggest using a continuing studies form to serve oh. as these their forms? Well, why didn't you say something earlier? I just noticed. Brad <laughs> was on the screen. I'm like, Which form? Okay, everybody X out of that tab. Sorry. Uh, number three on the list. There. Number three. Yeah. So everyone, X out of that tab. No. How come ours is going to look as pretty as yours? Mm -hmm. Where are you? Hold on. Randy, where are you? How do you get back? Um, you should have, if you open it in a new tab, you should just X out of that tab. And let's go back here. Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah. And then go in for us again. Yeah, we do. The reason why it doesn't look like that is because it's what an iframe on the website. No, 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 no. Just click on the name. So number three, where it says SCS inquiry forms. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Look at him go. Is that the right one? Are you messing me up, Marcus? No, no, I just don't want everybody panicking. So. Yeah, it oh, it's looks like you're very, panicking. It looks very good on the website, and that's what Marcus is trying to um, no, not that anybody's click on the URL. The third one. Thank you. Ooh, I appreciate that. And then open that one. Yeah. Thank you. It also looks like this, depending on where you are. Well, they're framed into the site. So you can go either way. Say it loud, Marcus, to the team. That is your inquiry yeah, form. Right? Which one is that one, the third one? Yes. Because mine doesn't look like that, but I see the third one. No, because yeah. we framed it on the website. Oh, okay. yeah. That's the raw form that we're filling out. Okay. They've implanted that on your website. So everybody... <laughs> Again, we right click on the form URL number three this time, open a new window, we're going to fill this out. So, 
Fill out your first name and please make sure you put the word delete in your last name. So I am Brandy Savage Delete. You will be whatever your first name is, last name delete. Very important because you do have live student records in here. Live prospect information. I want you to differentiate between that and our fun fake test record that you will have ultimate ability to edit and trash and bring back to life again. Okay? And so fill this out as um, with information that you would like to see. <coughs> Let's get this party started. Yeah. I live on Rocky Road. So these forms will be available to all of us once our, our uh, limits get put in? Mm -hmm. Actually, these forms are available to you right now. Um, you, you do not have the ability to create forms because, frankly, you don't know how to. Um, and that's just a bigger thing. But if you need something created, um, Marcus will be able to custom create anything that you need or teach you how to do that. Yeah. And how long does that usually take? If you're really good, it could take like an hour. I don't know if Marcus is that good. Form? Okay. I don't know if Marcus is that good. An hour is long. <laughs> Five oh, minutes. Can, ooh, burn. Yeah. As long as you have the, deta the, the layout and the fields of information, it takes not a long time at all. We just started. Yeah. But right now, the cases are all in there for everybody. So at some point, we're going to put on there where I'm going to save my own cases. I'm going to teach you guys how to find your own cases so that you can only see what you want to see. Because I don't want to see all this. I know. That is why you are here. Yes, submit it, please. Hit OK if you pass the message. Yep, hit OK, all that jazz. So that message that you're seeing that's customized, you guys built that in. Hit OK. <coughs> and it just takes you back because that's how you guys intended that form to operate. OK? So did everybody make their test record via submitting this? Yes? Yes. yes. Wonderful. Can I say just two You can say two points. or three things. Um, one, um, if you see anything that's not right, so and I'm thinking specifically about the <laughs> The enrollment information at the bottom, those fields are driven, they're tied together. So if you select a certain term, you see a certain program, if you select a type of program, you only see those types of programs, so on. If you see something wrong, tell me or Nadez or Gina and we'll fix it. The other thing is we can't blanket make hundreds of forms. I know it sounds great, but we're trying to keep these specific. So. We will have them for certain activities, so if somebody's like going out, like Joanne or Juan or Octavia are going to a fair, and you have a fair form, we'll create that and build things in the background that make sure they assign to you appropriately. We'll work that all out, but if you have any questions, email gbianco at rw. <laughs> okay. and I will get this to Marcus. It's important that, you know, recognize that Marcus is the project leader. He really is doing his own. He's like a one-man show and everything, where Nadej and I and Carolyn have a little bit more support between each other. Um, I think it's important to note that when it says what program are you looking for, or what type of program are you looking for, um, Carolyn's team has been very um, active in ensuring that program codes and what we have available is being fed into the system. So bachelor's degrees, it will pull up anything that we have an active program code for. Um, so, with that said, I'm not quite sure that your community, healthy community, is in there, but it is okay. So I'm just letting you know that once the registrar's office gives us a program code, then those changes will be in there. So until those changes are done, and we actually have a program code, um, that will go live, and we will work in partnership with the business office. There is one, I believe, this is not yep. there yet because it has not cleared the provost. Office. Correct. So once it clears, Carolyn and I have a whole systematized process where she gives me the information. I tell her what's in curriculum committee, she gets it from the registrar's office, and then we I give it to her, she gives it to you, you get it. 
Yeah. I have a question though. Yeah. When they're coming in here as an associate's degree and you just have the actual headings, how do we track to know what, like, we don't have particular program codes for those, so that's something that you and I are going to have to build out. Okay. So once we get program codes and we build those out, that's important. Okay. We'll get it. Okay? Yep. So it may just be a minor <coughs> change Got it. through curriculum committee so we can get a code for them and then we'll look for that. Okay. Okay. Awesome. There's no change for them separate from the application? <coughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> question? Lydia, it's going to all right. We've all done that. Yes. Yes. A quick question yep. on the non-credit side. How are you guys handling those skills? Um, mm -hmm. Nothing's been built on the CWPD side. <coughs> That's a conversation that we're going to have. I think they would have their own form. Yep. They have their own English form. And that doesn't come to our. Does side. that come to our our pool? Uh, our. Uh, bullpen. No, it won't be on our bullpen. The bullpen is going to be managed by the CWPD team. <laughs> Good questions. This is what this is for. Lois. Okay. So this opened up in a new tab. I want you to go back to the tab that says Hobson's Radius. So go back to the screen that has all the inquiry forms listed. Yes. We good? Yep. I love you. So now we all have test records in here. And we've done this so that we can all <coughs> practice view building. So what we're about to do is talk about building views, utilizing the criteria builder in this system that builds both views and targets. So Ami asked earlier, I want to see only my stuff. I want to see everybody's stuff. This is how you build the list to find your stuff. But will it always be there or I have to build it every time I want It will on? always be there, girl. I Rock got and roll. you. Rock and roll. I got you. <laughs> I will not steer you astray, kids. I won't do it. <laughs> Good. I did not. So here's what we're all going to do. And I want to preface you by telling you what I'm going to start with. I'm starting with the most basic, generic criteria builder explanation. I want you all to feel comfortable using this. Okay? So that is what I'm going to teach you. Pure functionality. You will then apply what you're learning functionally to then say, this is what I am going to need for my job. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, yes. just want to make sure we are setting expectations early on. So everybody, click on the contacts tab and then click on the contacts module. So contacts, contacts. Oh, look at you. Mark is changing things up. What We're proud of you. You have a different default than yesterday. I did. I followed your instructions. <laughs> look at that. <coughs> listen, listen to me and do what I say. Look, 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 look how successful you are. Okay. Everybody else, you should be seeing this screen. It should be looking like this. Does it look like this ish? Yes. Yes. Ish. Ish. Yes. ish. Again, yep. ish. Doesn't have to look exactly like this. What yeah. did you do? Did you click on contacts tab? I went to contacts. Did you click on contacts? It looks like this. It looks like this. It does look like that. Okay. It does look like this. Yes. Again, ish. Oh, right. oh, this was already my last name. It was two contacts. That's all right. With yes. right. Contacts, contacts. Last name. Now, what we have just no, done. Yeah. Click my field. It doesn't have to look exactly like this, but it's similar. So whenever you see that, that way, I want to get my own. We have sore. Yes. Yes. So remember, I'm walking you through pure functionality and all this. You guys are going to want to jump ahead because you are smart and capable human beings. I'm going to ask you to refrain from that because you will Stop inevitably it. miss something <laughs> important that I'm going to say. Are we clear on that? Yes. Please, please, sure. please do not jump yes. ahead. You are not skilled enough to go back to where I am. Okay? Got it. Yes. I want to give you the full kit and caboodle. Stay with me. I promise I'm going to lead you into glory. Okay. Now, we are all in the contacts module. I know this because up at the top there's a dark gray bar and it says contacts. And then there's also a little baby Rolodex symbol, right? It looks like a Rolodex sheet for those of you who remember what that looks like. Do they still make Rolodexes? I don't know. No. They should. They were, they were handy, right? Word to the wise, an insider tip from me to you. Everything in this system looks almost identical. 
you will get lost, okay? Helpful tip, learn those symbols. It's gonna tell you where you are, okay? So we're in the contacts module where we now have access to views of contact records. <clears throat> so right now what I am looking at are all the contacts in the system. And I know that because right under where it says contacts, that drop down says all contacts. Yep. Does yours say all contacts? Yes, yes. it does. Fantastic. Now that is the default today. I'm going to show you guys how to change that so that each and every one of you can have a separate default. So it doesn't go to all contacts because frankly you don't need to say all contacts, right? Right. right. Now, we're going to walk through first the criteria builder, then we're going to talk about how to sort and make these lists your own. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Let's go. All right, Jim. Next to that all contacts, you see a button that says view? Click it. Second item says create. Yep. Click that. And you should see this. Yeah. Now this is the criteria builder. So we're going to walk through how to use this. This criteria builder is the same process for both views, which is what we're building now, and for targets, which is used for communication. They are not the same thing. If you build a view and you want to use it to communicate, you do have to build a separate target. This is going to be your practice on that. Okay? Now, first thing we're going to do is give it a name. So yesterday with the admin group training, we talked about naming conventions. This is something, an ongoing conversation that I want all of you to have together when I leave. And I say this because you are new to this system, which means you can start fresh and do it the right way. I cannot tell you the number of times I've gone back to clients that have been active for two, three, or four years where half of you are now gone, and people say, I don't like using this system because I can't find anything. And the reason why they can't find anything is because they don't know what anything is called because everybody's naming things all crazy. G's got her views, and Esther's like, Esther's super awesome views, and Brandy's got her super fabulous views, and when Brandy and Esther and Jeannie leave, no one has any idea what they are doing, right? Which means they can't utilize those things. So we've already started that process of creating a formula for all of you to use, and we started drafting it out up here, where we'll have, like, it starts with potentially grad, or SCS, or law, or something of that nature, then specifying the entry term, Right, so fall 17, spring 18, et cetera, and then what you're looking for, like prospects or applicants and things of that nature. Start turning your wheels on what makes sense for you guys because ideally I want all of you to agree on a set pattern for your naming conventions so that you can be successful in this system. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Marcus. So Gina and I are probably going to have a follow-up meeting with all of you guys um, in the next couple of weeks. And what we're probably going to do is standardize a set of views that will be universal for all of you. So that, because ultimately, if we all start setting our own views, we can make five or ten a piece, and all of a sudden we've got 150 views in there real fast. So, um, just so you know, coming down the pike, we're, that doesn't mean you won't individually have your own needs for certain views and things, and we'll go over that. But ideally, we'd like to come up with a set of standard views that work for everybody so that we're not uh, complicating these things. It's going to drive you crazy, too, because you have to go through that list of things all the time and find the views you want. If you name it by fall, if you name it fall 16 or whatever, don't you then have to rename it every semester? If you reuse that same view, yeah. And you should. So, and you should. Yeah. Right, so then why would we rename it fall 16? Why wouldn't you just name it applicant, liberal arts, applicants, and all the years because are Because all the applications are triggered by the intended date of entry. But then you have to completely change the views all the time. Well, you could. You Before, could we're going down rabbit hole for a second. Yeah. <coughs> Let me get through this. Let me put a pin in you, Marcus. Let me get through this because it's not going through a list of views all the time. I'm going to show you how to create the views that you need and put them on your home screen so you don't have to go through those lists. Ideally, what you want to do is log in and see whatever you need to see. But we got to create the list first. Jeez. i got to ask a question here yeah. because right now we're just playing. We're playing. Yeah, we're just playing right now. Right. So all the stuff that you're telling us, we're going to have to go back to our computers and our office and do... All this yeah. over again, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. But and you're, you're going to be ready right to. We're, we're here to help it's, you. It's, so uh, yeah. Yeah. it's not by yourself. I've heard that before. Gina. Uh, 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 Jeannie. Yes. It's no. web based. Yeah. So when you sign in to any honest. computer, whatever yeah. you've already set yeah. up today, yeah. Yeah. it will be there. Oh, well, we'll do that. Yeah. Oh, we can do it right. Yeah. yeah. The idea yeah. is. Initially, I'm going to be very honest, this is a lot of front-end heavy work, right? You have to first build what you need. But these are not things that are going to disappear every day. Once you build what you need, a yeah. collection of your views for whatever you do, yeah. they're here for life until they're gone, yeah. right? So realistically, we build, you do heavy building at the beginning, and then it's coasting. Yeah. 
which is really good. But you're going to need to practice to do this anyway, so all the building all the time. Um. All right, now I have a naming, a training naming convention that I follow for every client. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to name it your first and last initial. Mine, it's BS in real life. <laughs> so if you share initials with someone, put your middle initial. If you guys have the same three initials, well, I don't know what to tell you. Training. Figure it out. <laughs> follow by the word training because this is going to tell us that this is for training purposes. By the way, you can rename these views later. So if you do decide to come back and build something for real that you can use, you can just rename this, okay? Followed by the word view because that is what we're doing. So your naming convention should look like this. Your first and last initial. That is not BS. I'm the only BS of this. Followed by the word training and view. Underneath that, you see an opportunity to set this view as your default. This is per user, so each and every one of you in the future is going to be able to check this box and say, whatever view I'm creating, this is what I want to see when I go into this particular module. Per user, you can have one default view <coughs> per module. We're in the contacts module right now. You can set a default there. When you set that default, it affects zero people in the system. It is only for you. And you can change that at any time. Now, I'm not going to check this because I'm logged in as Marcus, and he already has another view set as his, as his default. Right now, your default is all contacts. So when you get more comfortable with this and you get your views built, you'll be able to make whatever you want your default. Understand? Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Okay. Next, criteria type. There are two criteria types here. I'm going to start with the one you're probably not going to use that often, but definitely has a use case. Then we'll go through the criteria builder. So let's all change that criteria type first to static. Let me tell you what a static view or a static target is. A static view or target is a list of records, in this case it would be contacts, that you want together for no other reason than you want them together. They do not have to share anything in common criteria-wise. Let me give you a couple of examples. Undergraduate institution in Alabama uses a static view for a group of students they call the A-list. Their counselors go out on the road and they're talking to people, okay? And it's like, I talked to Bill today and Bill's super excited about coming to Roger Williams. His mom came here, his dad came here, his, his blood is super excited. What they then say is, based on that conversation that I have with Bill, I feel real good about him converting to being a student. And so, they would manually put Bill on this A-list to track him and say, this Bill and other students, I feel really confident about coming. Now, they do that because there's no other criteria that Bill would have in common with anyone else. No program, no test scores, no GPA, no nothing. Just a gut feeling. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Another example. Community College in Ohio uses a static view to track residency issues. So on the application, a student says they're a resident of the state, but they're not, or they say they're not a state resident, but they are. Again, too much data to accurately pull that list, but when those errors come up, they use a static view to track all those problem children that we always have, right, to make sure that those problem children get solved and to report on them. So the idea behind a static view or a static target is there really isn't enough criteria to group them all together, but I want them together in the system. It's a very manual process. Here's how you do it. You're going to type in what you're looking for. So I'm going to type in Brandy. And look, there I am. I'm going to select that student. I'm going to add that contact. And now Brandy Savage Jaleed is in this static view until myself or another user that has access to this view comes in and removes it. <coughs> Okay, so ideally static views and static targets are for lists that do not have a lot of turnover, right? We're not coming in here every single day and adding our applicants in there. That's too much. Mm -hmm. This is also not going to be for a list that has like a thousand students on it because frankly you would have to put a thousand students on there manually. No one has time for that. Okay, do any of you see a potential use case in what you do today for a static view? So it could be like uh, students that are um, in the pipeline who are preparing credit doc stuff. That is a good one, yes. That I need to follow up with. That is good, yes. That's a great example. Anyone else? 
we can use static to just pull up anybody who inquired in the last week? No. Oh, no. There's a better way to do that. A okay. far better way. I mean, less manual. But good idea. I'm glad you're thinking, though. Okay. Any questions about a static view or a static target? Is that something that, that they would, given other ways to do things in there, is that something that would really be used or would some, another way be better? Another way is more often than not better, but there are going to be some instances in which you just don't have the data to use the criteria builder effectively, right? So um, with Tracy's example, of I want to find all inquiries that happened in the last week. There's actual data that says they've inquired and at, at a time. So I wouldn't need to manually put them on there. But it's really when you don't have enough data or they are all spread out across data points that you have to manually put them together that you're going to use this. It oh, is so not you have to look up each contact individually and put them on Exactly. Okay. Yes. Is there a way to look up each <coughs> contact without their name? Yes. Um, so phone number, email address. No, um, like a code. So for example, if a person comes in and um, Ty has someone who needs to do standardized credit doc and <laughs> what? And, and Natalie has somebody who needs to do standardized credit doc, and I'm in charge of standardized credit doc. Is there a way for me to see a list of everyone who's pending on standardized credit doc? Yes. Yeah. There should be. No. Yeah. I think what she's saying, though, is there any way that you can sort this view by standard doc, right? If you have the data, would yeah. you have that data piece in there? We will. Yeah, I, I don't I think, think stat would be the way to do it. Okay. No. We're going to track it off the application. Okay. We just haven't had it yet. Okay. So that would you, be a you can't. Yeah, but then you're still going up one-offs. You want to create a universe of just standard documentation. Is this the way you do that? No, no. This is the purpose of that, is those people who have a long-term process that you want to track in order to get them into So, the yeah, so static is not, static is like I'm sitting down and I want to have you on a list and Joanne on a list and Juan on a list. And I just want to see you three because I'm working with you three on specific things and I need to know you're there. The dynamics are different when we know, like, if we're tracking particular documents that are coming in, that's a whole separate module. That's like, not going to do that here. The no, we're going to do that decisions. Yeah. I, I think that it might be helpful once you <coughs> again in two weeks to actually have those business practices so people are, you know, that people know where to put those specific parking lot things, like standard yeah. documentation. We need to talk about standardized doc, because the way yeah. you just explained it is not going to work for me. Yeah, but what, what you're talking about, I mean, it's still is a, is a about data. about something different. Yeah, you it's know? a data I mean, category. Step back. You have to understand, Marcus, myself, and this is not just Marcus and I making these decisions. Jamie is heavily involved. Emily's involved. These are things that are being built. Emily's meeting with Jamie today. The, we understand this was to use the training effectively to get all of you introdu introduced to this. Keep in mind, the only thing going wrong <coughs> starting after this training is prospects. Mm -hmm. Applications and students are totally different right now. Please keep in mind that this is to get you comfortable with using the system and not repeat history. And when we started doing the inquiries back in the day where only the admissions team was handling inquiries, again, I, you know, so I understand we get everybody's business needs. This is really just an introduction mm -hmm. to the system mm -hmm. and to understand My all question. the capabilities of the system. And then we will build things as we need. My point wasn't to talk, talk about building it. She asked an example of how to do a static list. Correct. And I'm giving her an example of a static list I would like to create. Correct. But again, we're not there the yet. We're only create creating static, static lists right now for prospects. We may, but down the line, we may be able to categorize students by in the process of credit docking or standardized credit <laughs> docking. And then you can pull that whole list. But not data point. But not yeah, I get it. So it may not be a status. Because credit doc is for current students. <coughs> so we're, you know, it's not. But once they get to that point questions. in the system, that's going to be a data point. Correct. So we can pull that list as opposed to having to create it instead. Yeah. So, so we have to have a broader process discussion. Um, you know, there's a lot we still need to sort out. This is just one of many things. We're not going to solve it today. Right. Today we want to make sure you all feel comfortable with contacts, mm -hmm. seeing if requirements come in, those pieces so that we can have a deeper conversation as we go further, because we want everybody to have a baseline, and if we don't want just like the four of us that are using it to understand, you guys are all one. How do so I, I think it's really so we'll important then as people ask questions. I right. think people need to just, you need to, we need to hear from you. That's coming, let's move on, because yeah. a lot of this is all into, into correct. Yeah. So let me give you all a helpful tip, because I see lots of pens and notes. When you have those process questions, let's just have a baseline. The process isn't built yet. Let's just go ahead and say that. So, exactly. when you 
have those process questions, write those things down, right. because this is not, again, something that's going to be handled today, because frankly, you don't have everything <coughs> built out to manage those processes, but like the standard doc, you're like, okay, standard doc, where is this happening, is this going to be something in the system, bam, because okay. those are things that you're going to take together and work out and that figure out what's going to happen. That was a helpful clarification, Thank you. Okay. Good idea, guys. All right. So we understand static. Okay. I have one question about the search, yeah. though, because um, like in Kali, if I if I can't remember a student's name off the top of my head, and I'm, is it a, a, a broad search? You just need like three characters, so... So it'll pull up anything, because if I don't have the exact spelling of the name, and yeah. sometimes I do have the exact spelling of the name, right. it still doesn't pull up the student. So if I'm close... We'll if you're moderately it. close, you can yeah. get there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good questions. Okay. All right. Let's change our criteria type now to dynamic, and let's talk about the building of this. So let me reiterate, I'm showing pure functionality at this point. We're not building a real student list, because frankly, we don't have all that data in here, but I want you to feel comfortable with what it can do. And then think about how this is going to apply to your jobs. <coughs> so how many of you have built a query in any system ever in life? or search for anything. Have you done a Google search? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone should be raising their hands at this point. Please tell me someone's yep, used Google. Yes. Okay, good job. Okay, this is literally just searching. All right, so you know when you're on Google and you're like, I wanna find hot new restaurants near me that are open at 9 p.m. and you type in all this stuff and you get results. Same general basic theory. Here, using the criteria builder, dynamic type, what we're saying is find all the <coughs> records in the system that meet this criteria. All right, so as long as the data exists in the system, you will be able to find it. So the key is, does the data exist in the system? Now again, as I said earlier, this is something that's gonna grow with you. So today it may not be in there, but it very well could be in there in the figurative tomorrow. And you all have the ability, and I say you all, I mean admin team, to add data points as you need them. Okay, so again, thinking about this as you're seeing what's available now, think about what you would like to have in the future, write it down, then you guys will reconvene later and say, is this something that we can reasonably put in this system for your job purposes? Okay, let's walk through this. So, what you're seeing here is a line of logic. So for each data point, you're going to have a separate line of logic. For example, I want to look for inquiries for a specific program that happened within a specific time frame, right? Those are three separate data points. I'm going to need three lines of logic. So for every characteristic of the group, I'm going to have to have another line. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. So let's walk through these basics. So in this first line of logic here, you'll see that one, contacts module is the default. It is the default because we are building in the contacts module. When I start to talk about cases or applications, I will potentially be building those in those separate modules. And therefore, this will default to that. Does that make sense? Now if I click this drop down, I see all of the potential modules that are available. So again, going back to my tree, what we're doing right now is building a view in the tree trunk record. The benefit of that is that I also have access to all the branches of information. What that means for you is I no longer have to cross-reference multiple lists to see if people are on the same ones. If I want to see all the applicants who attended a um, registration event or an open house, I can actually pull that all into one list in the system. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This is huge, guys, really big. You just gotta know where that lives. Now, after training and once you guys get closer to your actual go live, uh, I've already made this request with Marcus, you will have a full list of all of the fields and the modules that they live in, okay? So that's post-training so you guys can get familiar with where the data lives in this system. That is going to be a big hurdle that you will have to get over. So I'm preparing you for that. You will be uncomfortable in this for a little while until you really get the hang of where does this data piece live? Okay? Now, we're going to stay here in the contacts module for the time being. That's something yeah. So if I created a list for like mm -hmm. any, any, pros any prospect inquiry, community development or healthy communities for my programs that aren't a 
active enrolled student, right? Mm -hmm. If they, at any point in that process, let's say they send everything they need to the admissions and then they're now an active student, would they automatically disappear from that list? If they no longer met that criteria, yes, they would. That's the beauty of dynamic uh, views is that when they meet the criteria, they're automatically added in. So when new students meet that, they go in, and when they no longer meet that criteria, automatically removed. You don't have to go in and remove and add and do any of that stuff. Just one quick thing, just so everybody is remembering. We talked about this a little bit on Friday with the group that was there. The intent of this system is to be from when the student asks for information to when they get up to sitting in class, so they're enrolled. After that, we're using Colleague and Civitas and all the other various tools that we have at our disposal. So this is really just front end getting students here, communications plans, recruiting, all that stuff, and then they're here. If down the line we find other ways that we can support other things, I don't know about the credit doc process, that's new to me, I don't know about some of these other things. So we can figure out how ways to plug various things in that might support that. But just so you're all remembering that once students get enrolled, we're not doing much with them unless they're coming back for another program and applying again and all that kind of stuff. So this is all front end. And then we can build a status that's like enrolled or something like that mm -hmm. that pulls them out of all the various ports that we're talking about. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. So once they're active or enrolled, we're not. We have Civitas. That's a whole other. Right. So Civitas will be the system that we use to remind them that to re enroll and that. And that Yes. So once they're through the system and then they're in their second semester, we'll be using Civitas. Civitas, correct. Right. And that's a whole other... And when does that go live? Not now. <laughs> Not, Not now. now. <laughs> we have to get this, yes. as a team, I have to, Jamie and I have to be very um, critical at looking at how we can get training and rolling things out. The importance of us getting this live quickly and all of you training is because we're going into the hybrid registration. Monday we go live with registration. Yep. So this whole new process had to be for you to be trained before we went live on Monday. Yeah. And then we'll get you up to speed on some of the tests. So really, realistically, seriously, for all the advisors in here, after the second semester, this is they, they're not needed in the system anymore. Correct. Okay. Well, not for advisors are still going to be touching prospects and new students, so they're still going to be using it. They're just yeah, no, I mean the student. Pool of students. Yeah, that's what I mean. Once the pool has gone through the second semester, they are, they're looking at the oh, new school. Correct. Right. Right. It's okay. I don't think I'd be. Oh, no, no, no. Is this going to interrupt? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We haven't talked about that yet, but we might be able to investigate that. Let's incentivize this. Well, it's going to talk to Holly. Well, this is talking to Holly. So once the students are going to be important piece of this. This does talk to Holly. Yeah. Oh, Brandy Brandy's all. Okay, guys. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. 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 Hold so bear with me for like 10 minutes. Brandy, get your break. Yes, Can you give them a break at 10.50? Because that's when I have to leave. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Special request. Are y'all all right with that? And she all said that she was kind of quiet and weak. <laughs> You're coming that's back? Totally but right. I do speak up when I need stuff. That's totally okay. okay. <laughs> all right. First, let's go ahead and let's try to build something so we can at least see how this works. So we're going to keep our module at contacts. We're going to stay in the contacts module, look at that contact information. The field list here reflects the data that lives on the contact record. So again, post-training, you guys will get a full list of all of the fields in every single module so you guys can familiarize yourself with that. What I want you to do in the field drop-down list is scroll through until you find last name and select last name. So I want to talk to you about the different field types <coughs> as we're searching for and building a population. Now, last name is an open text field, like first name, like email, like address line. Open text fields have no parameters other than just give me all the stuff, right? Terrible to search on because the values are infinite, right? How many different ways are there to spell someone's name? A gazillion, right? But so I'm not going to use this to really search on those pieces. And I'm doing this also to help you guys when you are trying to say, hey, I need this data piece, you can tell Marcus and the other administrators how to build that. Because you're going to say how I want to use it. Does that make sense? Yes. So open text fields are great for data collection, terrible to search on. Understood? Mm -hmm. Now, with that, let's look at our comparators. This is going to change the relationship in what you're searching <coughs> for. Now, the default is is, but if I click that comparator drop down, I see is case sensitive. So if I care about the capitalization, have that option. I also have isn't, which is not equal to. So if I'm using is, is case sensitive or isn't, that means exactly what I'm typing in the value box is exactly what I'm looking for. 
So again, if I don't know exactly how their name is spelled, probably not going to say is, right? I don't right. really know. Wait, sorry, not to, not to freak out. <coughs> what happened to my screen? Refresh it. Refresh it. I thought right. you weren't coming to this training today. I didn't want to. She even made me. Jeez. <laughs> so wait, no, when I click on anything, it doesn't refresh it in the URL. I can't wait to watch this tape back. Nothing. We're set back by like 15, 20 minutes. Just saying. Which browser are you in? Press the Mozilla. Dude, I got it. Contacts and Whoa, this is I'm just going to log back. Okay. 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 Just catch up on me. Just catch up. Just in case you guys get a white screen in the future. I'm moving. I'm moving. Okay, calm down. Okay. So, is, is case sensitive, is it, that's your equals and does not equal. You also see contains and doesn't contain. So that is, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's going to contain this collection of characters. I don't know if Brandy spelled with a Y, an I, an IE, an EE, -E, but I know it starts with B-R-A-N-D, right? That's contains. I have ends with, starts with, pretty self-explanatory. And then I also have is empty and is not empty, right? Empty, there's nothing there. I am missing data. Is not empty, is I don't care what's there. I just need to know that you have something, right? Now what we're gonna do, since we all filled out the inquiry form and we put delete in our last names like we were instructed to do, we're gonna go to contains, because I don't know your full last name, but I know it should contain delete, right? So comparator is contains and the value type in delete, hopefully spelled correctly. Now, how do I know I'm on the right track? Above the field heading, you see a preview button. Does everyone see the preview button? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hit preview. There are 20 of us that have delete somewhere in our last names. We're on the right track. Yeah. Woot, woot. Woot, <laughs> woot. <laughs> okay. Now, if I want to be more specific with this group, maybe I want to find out programs that they're interested in or terms or something like that. I have to add another line of logic. Two ways to add a row. The first way, you'll see if I, under the join heading, it says add row. And if I click that, you'll see it brings back the very first line that I had, which is modified by, right? But I also see a green plus sign next to my lines of logic. Now watch what happens when I get the plus sign next to that last name field. It duplicates it. So this is a little shortcut, especially if you're doing multi-modular lines of logic, i.e. contact data, application data, case data, all in one, right? Save myself a click. I can um, use the green plus sign. At least it'll duplicate the module, and then I can adjust the fields as I need to. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Also, if I don't need that line of logic anymore, I click the red X and it is removed. Yay team. Okay. Next, let us change the second field and I want us to look for student type. Now, student type is a pick list field. It has predefined values. Okay, now we saw that on the form where we said, what program are you interested in and what term, and we made a selection from choice, right? That is not an open text field, it is a pick list field with predefined values. A student can't come here and say, I want to major in basket weaving and hair coloring, right? You have that program? Didn't think so. We're not giving them that opportunity. They're saying, this is what we offer you, you make a choice, okay? Now, it is still a text field, so the comparators are the same, but change it or make sure your comparator on that second line is is. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, with pick list fields, you'll notice the value is the value box has a drop down in it. And it shows you all of the available values for that field. Now, what's great about this is I can choose one or more, and Radius knows how this field is built. A student can't exist in grad student and SCS student at the same time. They are one or the other. But if I wanted to find all those students, how do I do it? Well, I just check both of those. And what that's going to do is tell Radius, hey, I'm looking for grad students or SCS students. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I'm going to hit preview again. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, we're still at 20. Yay. All of us meet all that criteria. Oh, I, did, I didn't do grab you also. Okay, you can just keep it SCS student if you want to. 
Let's add another row. Now I want to look for a date-based field. So Tracy asks, can I find all inquiries that did it in the last week? Yes, you can. We just have to make sure we have a date-based field that records that time. So the ones that we give you out of the box are created dates, modified dates, so that's across all records. For applications, app submitted dates, app created dates, decision created date, etc. Okay, so we got lots of date-based fields running around here. What I want to do in my third line, where it says modified by, I'm going to change that to modified time. You could also do created time if you want to. Does everyone have modified time or created time? Uh, yes. Verbals? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good job. All right, now, our comparators are going to change because now we're looking at measurements of time. All right, so we see is, we see our empties, and we see isn't, but we also see various forms of before and after. Okay, so I can say before this day, after seven days ago, etc., etc. I'm still going to keep this at is, and instead of typing a time in, which I could, a date or a time, but frankly, that's not a good use of your time, which means you have to come in here all the time and edit that. Nobody has to do that. What I want you guys to do when you're using these date-based fields is get in the habit of coming over to that little gear icon and choosing a predefined measurement of time. So look what we have. We have dates from calendars if you do want to make that choice. Next and previous wild card number of days. So if it's something odd like 11 days ago and I wanted to see that, you can do that. Fiscal years, previous, current, and next. You guys told us what your fiscal year was when um, you implemented. Usually it's from July 1 to June 30. That's already in the system. Fiscal quarters, go on your fiscal year. Then you have yesterday, today, right now at this exact moment, tomorrow, last week, next week, this week, last month, this <laughs> month, last 30, 60, 90, upcoming 30, 60, 90, 120. You got a lot, right? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> so much stuff, right? So if I'm gonna say, find all people who've been modified, their record has been edited in some way, shape, or form, that's what modified means, in the last 30 days, that's great because it's gonna be rolling. So day 30 today, tomorrow would be day 31, that would drop off. So it's constantly updating. So I don't have to go in and search for these things. I'm gonna preview that, that should still be 20 because everybody was just created within the last two days or modified. Yay team. Finally, I'm gonna add one more row and I'm gonna show you a numeric field. Now, the one I'm gonna show you does not have any data in it, but I just wanna show you the functionality of what it's going to do, okay? So what I want you to do is get a little crazy on me, and change that module in that fourth line to educations. So if you scroll down, you should see educations. Don't click on the arrow, click on the word. Now, educations is the um, history of where the student has went to school. On the application, they will tell us, hey, did you go, where'd you go to high school, where did you previously attend college, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll be able to use that. And if I click on that field list, I'm going to see things that are related to education history, like the grad year, the school name, when was the last time that they attended, is their most recently attended school. What I want you to choose is GPA. GPA is an example of a numeric field. So test scores-ish. Um, your prospect score that you're going to have in here will probably be a numeric field. And when built as such, look at your comparators. They're now mathematical symbols. Equals, does not equal, less than, greater than, or equal to, right? So if I want to say find all the people who have a GPA of a 3.5 or higher um, from their high school time, I'm able to do that as long as I have that data in the system. Yeah. Yay? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So again, I know this is not in here, but I just want to show you what it looks like anyway. I'm just going to do greater than or equal to 3.5. I type in my number there. If there was data in there, I would get a result, but I know that there's not. There shouldn't be. So I'm going to hit preview, and it should zero me out because there's nobody that meets all of that criteria. Okay? Questions so far? Just about the <coughs> criteria builder itself. Okay. Feeling good? Yeah. All right. So that's basics. Let's go a little a step up in our advancement. 
Once we added a second line of logic, we now have join operators on the left-hand side, and you see they all default to and. Does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. What that means is, essentially that's a plus sign in terms of logic. For you to get into this list, you have to have this, plus this, plus this, plus this. If you don't have them all, you don't get into my list. Easy peasy. But I can change that because I may have to be a little more flexible. Okay? So on my last line, I'm going to change that to or. Now let me show you how this is going to read now. Now to get in this list, you have to have this, plus this, plus this. Last name contains elite. Be one of these student types and modify in the last 30 days. Or any student, any student that has a GPA greater than or equal to 3.5 or is a population expander. Does that make sense? Okay. Now if I hit preview, what was once zero go, now goes back to my original 20. Population expander. Okay? Now if I change that or to minus, now I get to exclude a positive value. I want to find all the kids, but maybe exclude the ones that have disciplinary issues from this list. I want to put them somewhere else separately, right? I can do that very easily by excluding a data point from my list. So this one says find all these people, but exclude anybody whose GPA is greater than or equal to 3.5. And that should still be our 20, because again, nobody either has a GPA. Does that make sense? Yes. So you have lots of of possibilities here because some of your, your <coughs> populations are going to be kind of complex and you have that. These join operators are independent so you can have and, 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 or, and, and, minus, and, or, right? You can go ham and cheese with it. But when you do that, you got to be a little more specific. And so you'll notice at the beginning and end of every line is a blank space. That is for open or closed parentheses. So take you back to freshman year algebra, everybody's favorite subject, right? Mm -hmm. Order of operations, Trace is like, no. Uh, order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? Y'all remember that ish? Hopefully, fingers crossed. The P stands for parentheses, and in algebraic equations, when we see parentheses, it usually means keep this together or do this first, right? Compound interest, all that fun stuff. <laughs> Mortgages. So same theory applies here. When I have multiple join operators, and, and, or, and, or, minus, and, or, right? I gotta be specific to radius. It's smart, but it's not genius level smart. It doesn't know exactly what I'm talking about. And so sometimes I'm gonna have to say, radius, I need you to keep these lines together. And then keep these kind of separate. To do that, I'm going to put an open parentheses before the line. So you see I put one at the opening. And then close the parentheses after the last data point that I want in my group. You with me? No. Yeah. Okay. Where did you put that last parentheses? Right last after days. my 30 days. Now, in this example, nothing is going to change. If I preview it, I'm still going to have my 20. This is also a very important point because radius reads your lines of logic top to bottom, left to right, like you read a book which means that my first line of logic holds more weight than the ones at the bottom. Okay, so helpful tip from me to you. When you are thinking about building your populations, start with the broadest data piece possible. It may be applicants, it may be student type, it may be term. I don't know what, you're, what you would be actually looking for, but think really big and then get smaller as you go down your lines. Because if you start smaller up here, what ends up happening is you're starting to exclude people from your list. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do do that by mistake, there's no worries because you'll notice to the left of every line, there is the ability to move your lines up and down and change the order. So if you are running this and you're testing and you're like, ah, oh, something's right, it's too low, it's too high, change your order of your lines and see what that will do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Also, if you only put in one, or you don't put in enough, and you try to save, it will tell you, oh, what? Oh, I already did this again. Um, it will tell you that you don't have enough parentheses. You have too many open or too many closed parentheses, so it's not going to let you save it in the wrong way. Okay? So here's what I want us to do to save this population. 
All I want you to do is keep the first line. So X out of the last three lines for this. The only thing you should have is last name contains delete. And again, we're just testing. I just want to give you um, something to go on. Okay? All right. Now we are going to save this. And now your screen should look like this. Yes? Yes. Yay. Congratulations, you just created your first view. Wow. You did it. it. Woot. So if it's just one line item, you don't have to put the parentheses in? I mean, because that's, yeah. You yeah. don't have to put those in. Yeah. Okay. Not at all. All right, now that is the first part of view building. Define the population. Who am I looking for? You'll see when you build a view for the first time in the contact module, First name, last name, and email are your default fields. For some of you, that's going to be enough, but most of the time it's not. I need more data pieces. Can anybody take a wild guess and tell me how I can add more columns into my view? Add remove columns. <laughs> add remove columns. Yes. Boom. So right under your view name, which should now have your initials, training, and view, you'll see a button that says add remove columns. Now what's great about these views is that they are essentially independent little spreadsheets. What I'm doing to this view does not change anything in any other view. They are all independent. So for prospects, I can look at certain info. For applicants, I can look at certain info. For the problem children, I can look at other info. All of your views are independent. You will have multiple that you are looking at on a daily basis because of that, okay? So let's add in some data pieces. You'll see on the right-hand side, these are the ones that we already have in here, first name, last name, email. If I want to add more, on the left-hand side, these are the available ones. So scroll through that list and be, be free and fun and choose data pieces that you're interested in. I'm just going to choose some things at random. You can also start to type where it says available columns, if you're like, I wonder if we have something that says program, and you can do partials as well. Marcus, is there a way, you know when you go to lifestyle and you see all the, cl the, the clicks down of lifestyle in here? Lifestyle, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Isn't there a way to do it by SES and grad so that everything is not in there when you scroll? Um, I don't believe on that screen we can. Um, the well, we, we talked things. about yesterday with um, the roles. Uh, the profiles and the field level security. Yeah. It will that will. Okay, so we can call those down. Yeah. So, so it will can. work. Okay. That's a lot of scrolling. Yeah. And you have to go through all the grass stuff to get to the SCS stuff. So it's alphabetized. Right. <laughs> there was a time where it wasn't alphabetized, so we at least got that far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, <coughs> technically. There is no limit to the number of columns that you can add, so you can go and click to your heart's content. But functionally, there are going to be some limits. What you're looking at here is an iframe within a website. So this is not an Excel spreadsheet in which you can <coughs> horizontally scroll and go to like triple Z. Okay? The more columns you add, the smaller your columns are going to get. So if you want to see the information, keep it in check. Okay? Now also, you'll notice up here at the top left, there's a module button. And what that means is not only can I pull in columns from the current module I'm in, which is contacts, but I can also pull in data pieces from any of the other branches of information. So for example, I'm going to click Applications, and it will refresh to Application Data. Like when did they submit this, if they have it, their application status. And notice, on the right-hand side, it's even telling me which module it's pulling from. So again, no need to cross-reference lists now. I can put all the data into one that I need. Now, once you're done adding your columns, go ahead and hit OK. It will refresh. Now, Everything from here on out is going to be pretty much a hard save, and I will talk about um, <clears throat> rules of engagement here momentarily once we get to the building part um, to talk about how we can keep your data safe because we definitely want to make sure we do that. When you go through and build these, you don't want anyone touching and messing them up, so we will talk about that here in a moment. This is a hard save, meaning if I go away from this and come back, it's going to look exactly like this. Radius is not very friendly to remind you to save things. It's just going to save stuff. Okay? 
So when you make these changes, they are hard. It is there. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if you're looking at this like I am, you're noticing that there is not a stitch of sort at all. They're not in alphabetical order by first name, last name, email, program, date of birth, nothing. <laughs> right? So, how do I create order? Does anybody have, again, a wild guess as to how to create a sorting order in a view? Sorting order. Yay! And then it tells you to drag your columns here to sort. What? I love when it just speaks plain to me. Just tell me what to do. Now, obviously, I cannot sort by a column I don't have in here, so make sure you have the column there. Now, I'm going to sort mine by last name. So I'm going to go to my last name column, click it. Then I'm going to drag it where it says drag your columns here until I see that green checkbox. Everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Drop it. Automatically, boom, by last name. What if I wanted to do by last name and then first name? I can do that, too. Now I'm just going to take the first name column. Click it and drag it behind the last name in that sorting order bar. So I can do primary, secondary, tertiary, all that types of sorts. So as many columns as I have and I want to sort by it, I can do that. Oh. I know, right? Okay. Now when they're up here. This is kind of like an Excel sheet, yeah. but not an Excel. Okay. Exactly. Excel light. <laughs> now. When they're up here in the sorting order, I'm going to look on my first name one. You'll see they all have little gray arrows to the right. Does everyone see those little baby gray arrows? Mm -hmm. So if I click that, here I'm going to be able to change it from an ascending sort to a descending sort. And if I no longer want that column as a sort option, I can remove it. And again, this is a hard save. So if I come back into this view, it's going to look exactly like this. I do not have to do this every time I go in. Yay. Now what else? That's a basic sort, but I want some more options for my view. I want to look at this data a bit differently. So I can do other things. Are you ready? Top, um, if you hover over every column, you'll notice that they also have little gray arrows next to each one of them. I'm going to do mine um, by SES Intended Program. So I'm going to click the little arrow, and I'm going to have three options. And these are the same three options across all the columns. Group by this field, filter, wrap cell text. I'm going to start with the easiest one, which is wrap cell text. So you see some of those values are truncated, right? I can't see the full value there. So if I want to see that, of course I can manually extend that column, or I can just wrap that column. Look at that. And now I can see all the data. Tracy. How do you get it to like, okay, I have like all like sorting things, they're still up top. Mm -hmm. like how do you get it so like now it's correct down there? What are you sorting by? Like I, like sorting order, and I dragged my last name first and stuff like that, so how do I get it to actually oh, you, look at me? You've got four things that it's sorting on here. Yeah. So, and you're talking about her group, because she's not group. Um, you have to remove these sorts, you don't want to sort by phone. Oh no, I just wanted to. Yeah, so if you hit that little arrow, Oh. I put all I thought it was just them all up there by the uh, mm -mm. Only the ones that you actually want to sort by. Now you have to do that on a per column basis, the wrap cell text. There's no wrap the entire sheet, it's on a column by column basis. Also, you can only you can only wrap on values that have breaks, like spaces, right? If I try to wrap the email, it's not going to wrap because it says there's no break in the data. Does that make sense? Okay. Next, let's do something else. I'm going to still hang out with my intended program. I'm going to group by this field. Now here's what's going to happen. What it's going to do is now provide a primary grouping based on the values that are currently available, so everything in that column. It's still going to keep my sort, but each sort is now going to be grouped. So watch what happens. I'm doing mine by SES Intended Program, and I'm going to group. Now look. Here are all of my humanities, still in alphabetical order. Social sciences, H, P, still in alphabetical order. So it, makes it breaks it up a little bit, makes it a little easier to read when I really want to see this stuff. Yay? 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. One final thing. Wow. I know, right? <laughs> One final thing. Oh, go ahead. Question. Yeah. Um, when we, when they're grouped, some are highlighted and some aren't. <coughs> Great question. So you know when you get emails in Outlook and they're new, what do they look like? Bold. Bold. Exactly. What this means is that no user in the system has actually opened or clicked on that record. Wow. That's all that means. This is new and no one's touched it. So when it's bold, it's new and untouched. When it's normal typeface, that means anybody, somebody in the system has actually opened that record. Great question. Okay. One final thing, and that is filtering. Okay? Now, filtering is the only thing that is temporary. <coughs> and what this will allow you to do is say you have a large list of people, and you're like, I really just want to see this smaller subpopulation in this list. I don't want to make a whole other view for them, because I only need it for a short amount of time, and I don't want to adjust the criteria in the entire view, because I'm kind of lazy. I only want to do that, right? By filtering, it says temporarily just show me the people who meet this criteria. And so in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that contains. It's a little baby line of logic. I'm going to make it is so I can get my drop down. And now I only want to look for the people, let's say, the criminal justice and the healthy communities. That's all I want to see right now. I'm going to check that little filter box. It's going to refresh. And now only show me the people who meet that criteria. Again, this is temporary, meaning if I navigate away from it and come back, this will not look like this. It will look like my original view. Does that make sense? Um, so, um, group by this field, mm -hmm. when we check that and we log out, we log back in. It's still grouped. It's still grouped? Mm -hmm. The wrapping and the grouping <laughs> will still be there. The filter will not. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened for me. Oh, no. Because I've been using the system for a while, and um, I'm just wondering if I have to save it before I log out. It's it's saving as you're making those changes. If that happens, um, this will be a good compass ticket to put in, because that's now a system glitch. Gotcha. Um, so let us know so that we can investigate that and make it happen, because it should not be happening like that. Okay. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, this is a good break time. Let's take 10, hydrate, refresh. We're going to come back and finish up this view talk. You're going in and group. Tracy, again? No, 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 I just can't. My sorting order. Hey, my sorting order, my sorting order is grayed out. Really? Which view are you in? I'm still in the context view. I narrowed it down by liberal arts. And I reordered everything to be the way I wanted it to be. that's grouped the way you're going to be. Yeah. I know, but... I can't sort it. I put a minute ago and now it's not that. I'll go back to you. Okay. Well, if I can put it in the what? What are you telling me to do? I have to tell you. There's a problem. So, sort it. What are you sorting by? What do you want to sort by? I want to sort by uh, the program. So, so what do I want? Are you going to log out? I'll log out. I'll log out. I'll log out. I'll log out. Check it out. Okay. Oh, and this? Six donuts. Six donuts. There you go. Got oh, you're using that's so you're sorting by case. Um, I just okay. Yeah. So, you so I just want I, I don't have any. Because you were like, I sat with you. I am like that. So I just want to. I don't have home screen. Um, I've got this set up. Um, no, I just press the university. So when I click on all programs, I'm just liberal arts. So I'm gonna have five programs. So it's the one thing. It's not gonna say. It'll say school continuing studies, I guess, but I want to just say my time and time. Right. Is that possible under yeah, this? I know it's possible under this. Yeah. Yeah. But is it possible? Well, I always have to have only my liberal arts students. Um, okay, then you're not going to need a work yet. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then that's no. not what you need. Yeah. So I need data. Yeah. I need to be able to make the graphs and stuff. Yeah. So I need a data one. Two parts of this one, would that be all the advisors? And two adjunct. Are you following me? Like, yeah. Does the data exist in the system? Have you looked at the content of the data all the state groups? Because if you don't have yeah, any for it, it's really easy to consolidate. Well, I have to build it, right? Yeah. Okay. But I don't like pick this and then build it behind this. Okay. No, you build it first. Oh, and then put it up. Okay. 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 So there's, we don't have a particular one that just does the data. So I have to build the data and then create the new view. And then build it. But see, they're building it. 
before. So that's Jesus why I had to buy in the yeah. 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 I had to just say it showed. And then I would go here and pick it, whatever they named it. So which mom I want to do is unfortunately it looks very lengthy right now because I have a lot of open cases. Which mom could you be having a running search um, for financial well, so what would work better for you than what I want to do is be able to see if I knew so that's her focus people who were brought in so now I know so this that will be, now can I move them from yeah. All right, so I want like this to be the main thing. Right, 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 right. So uh, this is a, all the people who are uh, that's why I like to go back that have to be touched. Yeah. Yeah. So again, yeah. I can yeah. sort this yeah. also yeah. right now. I haven't done it. Yeah. We don't have advisors. Yeah. Yeah. The advisors yeah. card. So this person comes in, this gets assigned to internal yeah. and I can sort it by their name, and then they can have their advisor name here, so that I can double check. Because I'm not actually doing the advising, but I oversee here. Yeah. Okay, so then this one I don't need necessarily. Nope. And then this one. Correct. Yeah. Where's I needing? So this one I'll be able to move This is the same thing as this, right? Uh, this you want new ones. So you want me to time to read this off Oh, right. Yeah. Hit that little arrow on the right. So that's too, because Carolyn is on. Okay. So the only other thing I think I need is the data view, like to be able to track my goals and stuff like that. They have to clean up this model. Cool. All right. So then that way I don't have to scroll. I'm really not trying to And so I just think I'm going to ask one question in the chat. Can you just stand on my chat? I'm going to tell you why. You don't have a little enough understanding of everything in here. And that's not the next area. Like, I can set up a task. I don't know what mine means. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. To you. you know what mine And it just shows that. Yeah, I, so if I wanted to do that, and then, and then also the so which I'm not the only one this. I don't want to talk through the name of the person. Look, only two contacts was empty. So I want to see an open case. So I also need mine in case somebody gets it. And the academic side completely wrong. But you may not have a good time to do it. You only see all of your past. I'm not. But you said you wanted it. No, they took that as a good time. But even the individualized go to an advisor. They don't come to me. I'm not the advisor. So I so they still go to the advisor here. and they get tasked yeah. with so so my team grant plan and send it back. So I don't actually So what I can do is do the same thing. I don't know if I can do that. You probably won't. But I think it's my is on credit. My is on high level. So that's what you have to fix this. 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 Yeah, that record being totally all over. Yeah, so you know, hey Gina. Yeah, I also three here. Sorry, I've been trying to do when they come in. Uh, who's owning the record? Use that I want to see. Yeah. Lois is going to own all Lois records. Is on the daily. So the, the my, so the my thing on here is not going to be any of them are going to be mine. They're all owned by somebody else and they get tasked to So even the individual is going to be tasked to an uh, uh, advisor, advisor but the advisor is going to send me the request to create the new plan. So the advisor that you have my cases right now, we could make that. Right now we're only on process. I'm remote. So I've got yes, yeah. yeah. so I'm trying to build my thing. Okay. So that's okay. my, okay. So do I don't know what you're doing. Now you're Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, I would say to come back on the way. Yeah, that's the thing. You hit the post office. Yeah. But I mean, I'm saying I don't do anything about that. I just send it back to her and let her know that it's been turned. And right now, we assign them. Right now, we only build on the process. Yeah. I understand. But as soon as I turn it, I click on the thing and I say turn or whatever. And then it goes back over. Yeah, it's just really good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it goes to the advisor. And then it goes to the advisor. Then I just see it on my list of under my. I'm but I'm not responsible for them unless there's a specific task that I have to sign off on.
No. Um, so then going forward, um, so a prospect is not an application. Got it. Got it. So I'm only handling the application. But when later on going on with, the, with individuals, when, I, it, when an application comes in, it goes to an advisor, but the advisor knows to reach out to the same. Gotcha. Process again. You only build a process. Yeah, I'm with you. I didn't look at you so fast because I had to be in there. We had to do that. I wanted to be in there. We had to share it with you. Sorry. Should be given that to the school. Yeah. They have more training. They have more training. And now you're coming in to talk to them about your program. Yeah, I got it. So then they can understand when they get a prospect about one of your programs. I got it. So it's like you like it. I understand. I mean, now we're living on the right on the website. Yeah. I understand. And then I can also talk to them about once they're actually admitted, how they go ahead and do the degree. I can kind of do it all at once, right? Do it all at once, but no, they only have an hour and a half, and we're going to have to have five. We're going to have to do it again, right? But I figure we can do it again after I get back from my little trip. You're the only one that's talking about degree places. Okay. That will be on the application is there a way that will notify you? Yeah. 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 So you haven't created the, I was asking her how to put the data. Can you put the data? Isn't that nice that they remember the We still record it? Yes, they just know that this is all on. I see you got it in the camera. It's been on forever. Did you see that? We need to shut it off. The subsidiary. So I, was my, yeah. so I was creating my four things, like you said, okay. and uh, so I've got, this is all my liberal arts okay. students, broken down by uh, the program that they're in. Yeah. This will be whatever they send to me, right? It's the lowest you send stuff to me, and it'll show up here. Okay, so yeah, it's right. Yeah. And then she won't yeah. send me tasks. No, I mean, there's nobody else that tasks is yeah, for you. It's just, Unless I mean, somebody sends you a task. So, like, Natalie yeah. gets an individualized yeah. in the future. Yeah. She'll send me the tasks. We task decided that we're not going to have to send you a task. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 because I'm not going to send you a task. You can do tasks, but we can't report on it. Jamie can't see it. Oh, okay. So we made, we had a meeting on Friday. Okay. We were outlining the plan. Yeah, and the advisors and to the people who were yeah. handling the people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it'll come up in a case yeah. for me if she gets an yeah. individual later. She'll get an individualized we application. Have, we haven't done so we keep trying to keep trying to get you to understand how to change our homes. Yeah, because they still have friends. You're going to get your prospects assigned to you. Got it. No challenge. It's going to be someone. Got it. You're going to get to application. This is going to be a whole other one. Right. I'm saying only about it. Okay. So you're saying there's no task for prospects. Funny how things work out. No task for prospects. Got it. I understand that. Unless I'm saying unless we decide to want to give you something to go with. You want to follow? Oh, then I can do that myself. Yeah. 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 I know we're going to be sending you tasks. Yeah. Yeah. In four prospects. Got it. I'm talking about going forward. I'm looking at the big picture. We are not. We are. We are, but we're not. Okay. So, got it. So my next question is, is not right now for prospects necessarily, but generally speaking, my board so thing here needs to be my yeah, data. Well, you, she says you have to create that you know, still, right? Ideas. So once you create it, you're going to have it. We have it created for what we've so, created for. You know, we're also we high above that. Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, so we have to all the different reports. We don't always know what's going on. No, exactly. So okay. I just at some point I will have my yeah. liberal arts yeah. reporting yeah. function yeah. here, and that will be my so formal model. Yeah. Oh, my grass is I'm with you. I'm just asking you. And then before we do anything, the application will have to take it together again. And then we have to wait. So that would be good. We're not doing it in silos, and we can invite you all to meet. No, I don't. We don't need to have it here on Friday. So my only question is, I got to have my cases, but do I have to have my contacts, or my contacts show up within the law? Your contacts will show up within the law. So is there a visualized on the issue undecided? Yes. I don't have undecided. Do I handle undecided? I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's good. The recognition, perfect. 
listed those steps. Those steps. Those steps. I mean, steps. Mm -hmm. you're seeing all steps. And um, well, we can vet to somebody else. And I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, so I need to add, but my question is, is I understand my cases, they'll be assigned to me by Lois. But my contacts, you don't really need to see them, but you may want to know how many people you have coming into the program. So I think my first question is, you want the status of me, too. Oh, this one. So I'm going to have another column. But I don't. Do I need a list of my contacts? What did you break this time? 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 So I'm going to say, 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 I'm
this, this computer keeps crashing. And you're still going to code the, and, and then I'll have to add to all mine all the um, AAs too once we get those coded, yeah. right? I, but you and I have to meet on them. I got it. Well, I understand. I got it. But then I looked at them because this is a hot lab. We were using that as last week. We were using patients to identify people. We really should have been using contact. I understand. In case it being the work that related under them. I understand. This is a hot mess. So right now, these closed <laughs> things mean nothing to me. They don't talk. They did? Oh, they're done. They're done. Okay. Lois is going to be studying next week to clean up all the new things. Okay. I don't think I'll ask you. So have you determined what your status is, quote, name is going to be? Um, so we'll be on the way. I'm not interested. Okay, what do you mean? Uh, uh, she answered my question. Okay. They're changing things, so I was trying yeah. to figure out what this means. Yeah. Um, I do have one question, though. When I went to, so when I go to this, and I go to my own um, homepage, I get my liberal arts view, which is what I want, right? But then to get to open this, I actually have to go to contact and open it. Oh, I can just open it this way. See, I'm going to ask everyone else to do it. I need to go. Okay. Let us reconvene. We're back. We are back. <laughs> All right, guys. You should still be inside of the training view that we have created. Are we all there, or can we get back to it? Yes. 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 Okay. So here's what we've done so far. We have built criteria for our views. We have added sorting orders to our views. We know how to add columns. We know how to remove columns. We yes. no longer need those data pieces. We understand that on each column there are three menu items that allow me to group, filter, and wrap the cell text on a per column basis. Do we all feel relatively comfortable with that? Yes. yes. Well, if you said no, you weren't here. <laughs> That's okay. And remember, all this is being yeah. recorded. And you have Compass as well that has, again, basic our functional video. We got all types of stuff for you. Why are some of the names um, folded and some aren't? Can anyone answer that question for her? Okay. Yes, you can. They're folded because they're, they're, no one's touched the record. Got it, thank you. Look at that learning. I love it. All right, we're still working in views. We have added columns, we have sorted. Let me tell you what else you can do inside of a view. Are you ready? Yes. Verbals, remember yes. 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 Thank you. Now, we're in our record, we're great. Now on the right hand side of our view, we see action items next to each line. Do we all see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Fantastic, now, this action button is going to be in all of the views, right? Now remember, we're in contact views. We're looking at contact records, it's a very specific thing. You will be building views in a lot of different modules depending on what your job duties are. And the values here will change, but primarily you will have the following. First, you will see an opportunity to clone, and we'll talk cloning ad nauseum here in a moment. Cloning is a system functionality. Sometimes it makes all of the sense. This is not one of those times, right? Why would I ever want to clone a student and create duplicates in the system? I wouldn't, but it is system functionality and I cannot remove it, but it's there. All right, just don't use it. Everybody understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we all caught up? Is there something we, we need to, I just think. Okay. Now, let me also time out and tell you, I am logged in as Marcus and Marcus is an admin. You will not see all the options that I have, because you are not an administrator of the system. And let's be honest, you don't want that power. Right? Power comes responsibility, and you don't want it. There we go. You should not have delete. Does anybody have delete? No. No. Thank you. Whew. All right. It means you can't delete these things. And frankly, again, you don't want to. Um, but just so you know, just like on your computer when you delete something, it goes to the recycle bin, Radius also has a recycle bin. So if somebody gets an errant hair and decides to have delete functionality and they delete something, it is not lost forever. There is the ability to restore, okay? But you don't have to worry about that because you can't delete anything. Next, edit. Yes. Edit. So you have the ability to edit an individual record. So for example, for Octavia, if I was like, oh, I want to update her 
an SES student to grad student or whatever, and I have those permissions because not everybody has those permissions, but if I do, I'll be able to edit that record. Next, I can send an ad hoc email directly to the student from this system. Yay! What it'll allow me to do is to type up or potentially choose an email template that has already been built. I can send that to the student and it looks like it's coming from me. When they reply, it will go to me in my Outlook and everybody's happy. Okay, so I can send ad hoc emails directly to students from a view. I can be a little bit of a creeper and I can see where they live. If they give me their address, minimum requirement is their zip code. If they give me their full address, I'm able to see down the street level on a Google map where they live. Little level creep. View means I can go into that particular record. In this case, it would be the contact record to view their information. All of these are for individuals. You with me? Yes. Okay. Now, far left, you'll notice every record in any view is going to have these check boxes. Once I select one or more here, I am now able to use the big actions button at the top right, the one with the magic wand. Does everyone see big actions? Tracy? Yeah. Um, when you were talking about edit, mm -hmm. I hit edit because I was curious what it looked like, and then I hit the back button, and now I can't find my TMP training view. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I know so why. why? Right? So, do me solid. Where it says navigation on the far left? Expand that. Expand. Yep. Do you see your view name? It says contacts, T, P, or whatever you call you gotta it. Gotta get rid of the calendar. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Back button functionality here is not super intuitive. You'll learn new ways to navigate through life. Yes. When you take an action, view an action. Hey guys, I can't hear this question. When when you take an action, send an email, for example. Is that documented in that profile? It is documented. I will show you where when we get to looking at a contact record. But you, yes, it is documented 100 percent of the time. Good question. Okay guys, remember we're still working on views and I need you to keep your attention up here so that you can learn some things. Thank you. Big actions means if I select using the checkbox one or more items, I can now do things in multiple. So again, you may not have all these items, but they are available to certain profiles. Now I can say mass update. So if I have a selection of people and I want to update them to the same value in a field, I have the ability here. Mass update. Mass delete, if I'm an admin, which means I can delete more than one record. And you don't have that. I don't have, I don't have any of those actions. Me neither. I, I just have create tasks, show on map, and send email. Yeah, me too. That's okay. Here. So, um, same here. So let me, we took away a lot of your privileges <laughs> until you have shown us <laughs> that you are responsible, <laughs> trustworthy members of the Radius no. community. You know that I won't be okay. using that. So, again, what I'm showing you is complete admin level access. You may say, oh, that would be really helpful for me and my job and what I do. That is then something you take up to the admins and then prove your worthiness and show that you're not going to mess something up. Sound good? Yes. Okay. Um, creation of tasks. So, tasks we'll talk about, we talk about cases, those are internal to do's. So if I said, oh, all these students, I need to create the same task for all of them to, you know, print their apps or do something of another, have the ability to do that. I can be a super creeper and show them all on a map. I'm a creeper. Um, max of 100 records. Yes. And you'll see it's a Google Map plugin. And if I hover over any of the tick marks, it'll show me who's, who's why. Hey, Juan. Is that where you really live? That's what probably Okay, good job. And if I scroll out, again, I can see all the peoples all over the map. Who lives in Florida? Oh, um, let's Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Joanne. <laughs> Wishful thinking. That's <laughs> um, so, Max 100, usually this is a recruitment tool if I'm out on the road um, and I want to see where the people are, are living and I want to find a common area for them to go. That's there. Not a lot of use case, but it's definitely nice to have. 
I can send multiple people the same email, up to 100 contacts. If this view had 134, I would only be able to send emails from this screen for the first 100. Okay? Now, if I want to send to all the people at the same time, look at this. Add to static target. Right. Again, but it's a possibility if you show that you are not going to ruin things. <laughs> okay? So I'm like, I want to send all this. Remember, static target is a list of people I'm sending a communication to that I'm manually putting together. So like that one-time blast email to these people. Mm -hmm. um, you guys also don't have this, but it is a possibility to merge potential duplicates. So if I, again, show my trustworthiness and I'm like, hey, these look like the same student, I want to merge them together so I don't have duplicates in there, that is a possibility in this system. What's the plus of doing it that way instead of just hitting the button that says, oh, that, that clicks all of the names and then you just send the email? Max 100. If your list has more than 100 people, then you have to have a target to send a mass email to them. Okay. Next, export. You have the ability to export this into either an Excel, CSV file, or a PDF version. Your view layout is your export layout, meaning <coughs> the columns, the sorting order, the grouping, the filtering, whatever your view looks like, that is what your Excel will look like. All right, so if you need to get this out, do stuff and things to it, you have the ability there. Above the export, you'll also see another search feature. This is different than the universal search feature. What this will do is search the entire system for whatever I'm looking for, this one will search just this view, right? So if a student I'm looking for, I search here and they're not in here, that means they're not in my view. Doesn't mean they're not in the system. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, let's get real fun. Let's talk rules of engagement. Because right now we've built, we've designed, and in real life we're gonna be doing this a whole lot in the beginning. We're gonna build, you're gonna design, you're like, I have everything I need, <coughs> perfect exactly the way I want to. But let's talk about how we can make sure it stays perfect and how I can share that information with people who need it in my Radius community. Are you ready for that? Yay. Yeah. Let's go back to the view button. Now again, you may not have all of these items and that's okay. Now we've already talked about create. This is where I'm going to create a view from scratch. Edit means this is where I'm going to come to go back into the criteria builder and either change the criteria rename that view or make that my new default. Okay, so edit will take me back to the criteria where I did all that fun stuff earlier. Reload, same as the refresh at the bottom, same as the refresh on your browser. This is live, but it's not super live. Let's say I'm hanging out on this view, just hanging out, looking at it, daydreaming, right? It's still live, but if I'm not doing anything to update or refresh the screen, I will miss people who now meet that criteria in new. Any click throughout the system counts as a refresh, but if I'm not clicking, it's not refreshing, right? So if I'm sitting here, 30 minutes goes by, and I want to know if anybody else meets this criteria, I can click any of those three, and it will refresh my view. Does that make sense? Yeah. Again, that one is probably the most out of reach. These two, the browser and the bottom, are obviously the easier ones to get to. Next, cloning. Now, sometimes it doesn't make sense, like cloning an individual contact. Other times, it makes all of the sense. You guys will be using this quite a bit. Now, um, my first time in Rhode Island, but I believe this to be true. You do not go in other people's houses and rearrange their furniture. Is that a truth no. amongst you? Yes. yes. <laughs> they don't have I say strange, right? You don't go in other people's houses and rearrange their furniture. You see what it takes to build a view, right? It can take a lot. Once you get it perfect, that is now your house. But if you see, if I click on this drop down, I got access to everybody's stuff, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes I want to see what my other team members are doing. And sometimes you're going to go in there and be like, oh, I like this view, but it's not for my program. And without thinking, you're going to start changing things. Remember, every change is a hard save. We don't want to change things in someone else's house, right? Mm -hmm. What we want to do is steal from them. Hey, right? In real life, they tell you don't copy, cheat, and steal. In radius life, copy, cheat, and steal. You have my permission. What you want to do is when you see something you like, instead of using your gut instinct to change it first, 
just steal it by cloning. So I'm going to hit clone on mine. You'll see, it tells me now to clone a custom view. Here, I, I'm going to change the name. So for me, I'm going to add chart to mine. I can also adjust the criteria. So if this was for another program and I wanted to change to mine, this is where I would do that. Again, cloning it. Now I'm not changing my criteria, I'm just gonna hit save. Now it's updating, I'm now in my new one. You can see there's that hyphen C for my new chart name. Not only does it take the criteria, but it takes the entire layout. Work smarter, not harder. This is an excellent onboarding tool when you're bringing new people in. Instead of trying to teach them from scratch, but sometimes it's hard, say hey, I've built something basic. Clone it, play with it, so you don't have to learn from scratch the way I did. So if I looked on somebody else's view and liked it, yes, I could hit clone and then just rename it like Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. What if I looked on somebody's view and just wanted to sort through it? Don't so it sort it. Clone it. Don't touch. Remember, everything you do is a hard save. So if you change a sort, you have changed that view. Someone's going to kick you up. But you could change your phone. <laughs> Yeah, your own, of course. This is more so if you're looking at something you didn't build. So the general rule, everyone listening, here is the rule of engagement. If you built it, do whatever you want. If you did not build it, clone it and then change it. You have no idea how someone's using that view. And we'll talk about other uses here in just a second. Okay. Next, schedule. Does everyone have schedule? No. No. All right, I'm going to tell you what it is, and you'll probably have to get access. You'll probably get it later. Scheduling a view. We all have someone to report to, yes? Yes. And somebody's always asking, can you send me a list of this? And I need a list of that. And I need it every day. I need it every Friday. And blah, blah, blah. Right? <laughs> That's life. Scheduling a view allows you to say, hey, I have built this list in Radius, and I'm going to send this to you in an email, Excel format, so you can stop harassing me. Holla. Right? So I'm going to hit schedule. Hit new. Now, first I'm going to give it a name. I can change the name if my view name doesn't matter. So if my um, dean, for example, says, can you send me a list of all of the admitted students every week? Okay, now dean could go in here, but sometimes they just don't want to do that. They want an e in mail, inbox, email. You can't say anything. Right? This is the way you can do that and automate it. Every Friday, dean, I'm going to send you this list. You'll be happy. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. So the owner of this is the person who's doing it. Again, I'm logged in as Marcus. That doesn't hold a lot of weight. Don't worry about it. Active status defaults to active, meaning I save it. It will actually do something. If I'm not quite sure, I'm building it, and I'm like, I want someone else to look at it, you can make it inactive. So it doesn't do anything, but it saves your progress. Okay? Next, who is going to get this? Now, you guys do not use groups. There will be nothing there. Don't ever go there. But you guys do use roles and users. So for example, if I wanted to send this to all of graduate admissions, all of you at some point or another, I'm just using grad, you can do SCS or law, I can say I want to send this to all the grad managers and all the grad processors. That's every user in the system who has that as their role. Which you guys are what, SCS? Who are they? Yeah? So you know, apply that to you to get the idea. Or I could say send this to specific users, like I want to send this to Gina and Marcus and Lois, right? Automatically send it to them. Now what if they're not a Radius user, but they still want this information? I don't want to give them access to Radius, but I want them to have the information. I can just type in their email, because this is not sending them access to Radius, it's sending them an Excel version of your view. Handy, right? Now, now I'm going to schedule it. So, is this a one-time only thing? Now or on a specific date in the future? But chances are they're going to ask you for this all the time. So let's do a preemptive strike and do it on a recurring basis. So daily, every day, every other day, weekly, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? <coughs> Monthly, on the first day of the month um, or on the seventh of the month, whatever. First Friday, whatever you want to do. Then, when is it going to end? After a certain number of times I'm sending this to you? by a specific date, if it's term specific, or never, you're gonna get this forever. Yay team. All right, next, share. This is super important. By default, every view is available to all users. 
which right now is not super huge because we got training stuff, but in real life, gonna be a big deal. Now when I see that icon, usually that means like share via email or on the social media or something like that. That is not what it means here. What this means is who amongst Radius users is going to be able to see and therefore edit this view. I click this, you'll see by default, all users are allowed to view this custom view. That is the default. The moment you hit save on a view, it's over. It is your responsibility on a per view basis to then say, I want to restrict access. Are you following me? Okay. Two options, show this only to me. It's for me, I'm the only one who needs to see it, show it only to me. Or, show it to the following roles or users. So if this is really something that could benefit all of SCS, or all the processors, or all the managers, I can make that choice. Or I want to say I want to share it with these very specific people, I can do that. Now, there is an asterisk on this. If I choose any of these two options, it is me plus somebody else, the admins. We cannot restrict administrators from viewing everything. So sorry, Marcus, um, Gina, you'll see all the stuff. Um, but for you guys, the lay users, this is going to be something you really want to get hardcore down to your processes, right? You don't want to see all of grad stuff. They don't want to see all of your stuff, right? Et cetera, et cetera. So restrict that access. So whatever these are, it's these people plus the administrators. They will always be able to see everything. Sound good? Yay. One final thing that you guys should not have, hopefully, is the deletion of a view. Do you guys have that? I muted. muted. Yeah. It's muted. It's I muted? I have deleted. I have deleted. I have deleted. Oof. Right. I have deleted. They should all, they all have the same access. So well, fine. we will figure that out. Um, you shouldn't. Maybe. You should. So, we well, don't go. Well, if we choose that, we don't have our view anymore. We can do it. Well, here's delete functionality is all or nothing. So, you can delete your own stuff, but you can delete somebody else's too. That's not good. And that's, yeah, that's not good. But so, can you delete it if they blocked you from seeing it? Well, if you have access to it, then you can delete it. But if you don't have access, then you can't. Then, obviously, by default, you can't. So, we do not go in other people's houses and rearrange their furniture. We don't burn their houses down. <laughs> right? Unlike deleting a record, if you delete a view, it is gone forever. There is no bringing it back to life. So, we do not want to get in the habit of deleting anything that we did not create. Do we agree to that? Yes. Okay. If you don't have this, <coughs> yay! You don't have to worry about that. But again, do not delete something. Here is the only check you get. Are you sure you want to do this? The answer is no. I am not. <laughs> okay? All right. Now, what else can I do with a view? Just talk rules of engagement. We all understand those things, right? Those are going to be some business processes that you will have to discuss, but it's totally doable. All right, next. What we're looking at, by default, is a list view. It shows us all the raw data, which sometimes that's what I need. But other times I'm going to want to see it in a more visually stimulating way. And I have a couple of options for that. Next to the view button, you see it says view as in the drop down that says list. Does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Yay. If I click that, I have two additional options, chart views and summary views. So let's demonstrate what they look like. I'm going to choose chart. Now when I do that, it's going to open up this large window that has looks like it needs to finish loading. It does not. It just has one lonely drop down in the middle. And in that drop down, I'm going to see different chart types. Pie, graph, grouped and stacked bar, um, line, etc. Now, I'm from Kentucky originally, and I like pie. So I'm going to show you pie. There you go. Now, this is an example of a pie graph. This is not your data. These are actually Hobson's global offices, so don't freak out. You don't have a whole bunch of people from Kuala Lumpur. It's just saying this is what a pie chart looks like in the event you did not know. <coughs> now, what's really fun about these charts is um, that not only can I customize what data pieces show there, but I am not limited by my criteria, meaning, you know in Excel when you try to do a chart, it's only going to do by the columns that you have in your chart? Mm -hmm. You don't have those limitations. I can actually choose to display any data piece I want to that is available in the system. So even if my criteria is just find the people who have delete, 
I can go and say, organize this by application, even though that is nowhere in any of my criteria or my columns. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a bit lazy, and uh, mine's already defaulting to the SCS <coughs> intended program, so I'm going to keep that. Now, I'm going to hit save and run, and now it's refreshed, and this is my population in chart form. Now, you have zero editing or design capabilities. What you see is what you get. The colors are chosen at random. The title is you know, telling you what you're looking at. Um, and the values are here that are the values that are available in your view. If I hover over any of these pieces, you will see the count as well as the percentages for each of the pie pieces. Now, I want to get this out of the system. If I want to maybe put this in an Excel sheet, print it out, throw darts at it. I don't know what you want to do with your life. Um, you can, by using the download chart button, it will download it as a ping file. Okay? Do not, I repeat, do not hit export if you want to get this visual out. Exporting will export the list view, the raw data that we were just working on, 100% of the time. If you want the chart, you download the chart. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. If I change this, it's like, you know what, pies are fun, but maybe I want this as a, a graph. I can hit edit and change my chart type to whatever I want it to display as. So I'm going to do columns, represent columns, bar, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Questions about my charts? Anything we're good? Nice. Can you put an N on there? Out of how many? No. Okay. All right. Now, let's change this to a summary view. Now, a summary view is going to give you count information for up to two fields. <clears throat> so I'm going to demonstrate this by using the same data piece, which is the SCS intended program. <clears throat> I'm just going to do one. But also, you'll notice that there are some minor calculations <coughs> that I can do on numeric fields. For example, if I wanted to know the average incoming GPA by program, I'm able to do that as long as there's data in the system. Does that make sense? So I'm just been, I'm only doing the first line that's required, SCS intended program, save and run, and then it's gonna give me a list of all those programs and the count total. Now anytime I see a hyperlink number in the system, it means I can click on it and see the people who meet that criteria. Okay. How are we feeling? Good. 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 Are we excited about the possibilities with these views? Yes. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. That was probably the best response I've had. Okay, so we've built it. We have it chosen as how we want to display it. Now what? Now we see here this long list. And in real life, I don't want to come in here every day and toggle through three, five, 10, 20 views that I need to do my job, right? So you shouldn't have to do that. So everybody, I want you to click on home and home. Home, home. You ready? Home, home. Home, home. So now, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, I know what these are. These are just views on my workspace. So this is what Marcus's workspace looks like when he logs in. So the idea is you build your view, you make it perfect and pretty for you, and then you get to put that on your workspace, your homepage. So whenever you log in, you see the views that matter to you. Let's show you how to do that. Top left, you see a button that says add widget. Click on it. So two drop downs. The first one, what module are we working in to build our views today? Say loud and proud. Contacts. Now where it says custom view, you will see a list of all of the views that are available. So choose your view, the one you just built, and hit OK. Now that's going to add it to the bottom. So if you scroll down, there's my VS Training View 2, exactly how I have it built. With my grouping, with my columns, with my sort just in miniature form. Yay! Now, in each of these widget boxes, you'll notice at the top right, they have four icons. Let me walk you through those. 
The first one looks like a greater than symbol. If you hover over it, it says Y. So if I have more columns in here and I really want to see it full, I can extend that across those two spaces so I can see more data. If I'm like, ah, I don't need that big, I can click that icon again and bring it back to a smaller pace. Good. Second icon looks like two arrows going in opposite directions. You hover over it, it says go to list. This is how I'm going to be able to get back into the view where I'm able to change it, build, and do all the fun stuff we just covered. Next icon looks like a gear. If I hover over it, it says edit. That's a bit of a misnomer. What this actually means is that I can switch out a view for this widget space. If I want to not have my training view too, if I want to have something else there, that's how I would easily switch through that. Finally, the X means I don't want this widget on my dashboard anymore. I'm going to get rid of it. It does not delete the view from the system. It just says I don't want it on my workspace. Easy peasy. So once I put it up here, it is there until I get rid of it. <coughs> Woo! How exciting. Now, how many can I have on here? Maximum number of widgets that you can have here are 10. Wow. That is 10 views. Two columns by five rows. When they are extended across two, when they're wide, they count as two spaces. Okay? But that's not it. 10 views is a lot, but it's not all you can do. Notice up on Marcus's, he actually has tabs up here. You probably don't. He has a call management one and a training one. Those are different workspaces. Game changer, because now, on a per user basis, I can customize how I want to organize all of my views. Top right, you see a button that says Add Workspace. You just gotta give it a name. Woot. I'm gonna call it Woot. How about that? Woot. <laughs> Yay. Now I have 10 more spaces for widgets. All the spaces. Maximum 10 widgets per <laughs> workspace. Maximum 10 workspaces. That is 100 opportunities for you to customize your experience with Radius. Holla! <laughs> That's huge. And I come from a missions and student services where you have to work in a system with a whole bunch of people. You have to hunt for everything you need. It is a pain in the butt. Wouldn't it be great if I could just put everything I need on my home page and it not affect anybody else? You can do that in Radius. Are we excited? Opportunities. And so you'll see here I added in like a chart view so I can do whatever I want to. If I want to break it down by members of my team. So um, Ami was talking, I have members on my team that I kind of monitor. I could have a whole workspace for just every single person on my team. I can have one for all prospects. I can have one for all applications. I can have one just for reports. I can do whatever because this doesn't affect anybody but you. Every workspace is user specific. These are non-transferable, meaning I can't build a workspace and then send this over to Juan. He's not going to get it. He has, every user has to build it themselves. So if you're onboarding new people, you will have to train them on how to do this. But once it's done, it is done. Thoughts, feelings, questions. Very good. Good. Very good. Good. Yeah. Here. Good. That is okay. I was hoping for a little more excitement. Awesome. Awesome. If awesome. I want to rename the workspace one to something. Yes. Um, you choose the workspace and you go to workspace actions and then hit edit. Good question. <laughs> do you have a question? I do. Good. So I don't use the, the system the, the way the majority uh, are going to use mm -hmm. the system. So I was curious on how I could use the workspace for me. So I, I am going to be building out the communication plans. I am the one that creates the, the, the forms. And then I do some other stuff. But um, how can I use it? Like, what would be a good way for me to use the space? We haven't talked about this yet, but I <coughs> talked about this with Marcus yesterday, and, we talk, and we're going to talk about it after lunch um, with tasks. So since you're the builder of things, um, you may have task views that say, hey, I need you to build this, and that's going to be your oh, workflow. Okay. That says, oh, someone's asked me to build this form or edit this form. Oh, they're asking me to build this target and send this communication, right? Yeah. That is how you would use it, because this just finds records. And so everything in the system, student, application, task, case, Form, those are all technically just records. So whatever records you need to find, you just build the view to find 
those things. Mm -hmm. That answer? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Anybody else? Go ahead. This is the time, girl. Going forward, <laughs> Gina, I know. I know we're only doing prospects. But does it make sense to have, I just created two views, or two um, uh, workspaces, workspaces mm -hmm. one for prospects for now, and does it make sense to also do a separate view just for the applicants, or does it yeah. make sense just to do it all into the one field? Which one's easier to sort? Like, separate. Okay. <coughs> Short answer to a very long question, Thank but yes, separate. <laughs> and that was a great question. Anybody else? You can't drag, I just tried it. You, you can't drag and drop. Like something that you have on one tab to another tab. I just tried it. I didn't. You used to be able to, but that might also be a glitchy thing because we're all trying to do something at the same time. So I'll double check on that. Okay. Yeah. So um, I just had an idea on how to put my, my workspace together mm -hmm. um, by adding the module and, and having. So I'm in admissions and I do, um, you know, calling. And I want to do a call list. So I'm kind of starting backwards. So mm -hmm. if I just created the, the, the module up there, mm -hmm. is, if that is, that's the right word I'm using. Widget. Widget, right. Mm -hmm. If um, I add a, a widget, how do I work backwards to create a list to put into the call list? You, you know what I'm saying? You can't really work backwards. You have to have the list built in order right. to put the widget up there. Gotcha. So that's why we talk views first, because that is where you always are going to start. Okay. What am I, what's my call list, right? You need to be able to define that, find your calls, and then once you just have that basic list, then you can put it up here. And you can, of course, edit that as you need to. Gotcha. But you won't be able to just add a widget because it won't exist for you to add. Okay. Thanks for your question. Yes. That's the same thing with my data, right? Exactly. Got it. Until it exists, it's just like there's nothing to put on there. Right. Start at the view. Start at the view. Define your population. What do I want to find? Always start there. Any other questions? Okay. I want to reiterate. There's a recording of all of this. There's also going to be subsequent training after this as you guys get more comfortable as business processes start to be developed. And there is Compass. So remember, you're not going to be an expert on this today. The idea is to get you comfortable with what the system is able to do. This is also your starting point to say, okay, now, I know what system is capable of, I have to start redefining my business processes, right, to fit this tool. Now that it can do this, what do I need to do? And again, I would advise you guys to write these things down, take these notes, because these are fleeting things. You're going to get real excited, be like, oh, I can do this, and this, and this, woo, -woo right? But we got to come together to figure out how we're all going to coexist in this system and make it work for everyone. This is your starting point. You will get more learning opportunities. You will get better verse. And when there's more data, you'll see the bigger picture. Feeling good? Yep. Awesome. Perfect stopping place. Let's break for lunch. We will come back at 1. Once we do that, what we'll now be talking about is looking at individual contacts. What can we see on a contact record? And cases, case management and tasks. Yes. OK? That is after lunch. Thank you all so much for a great morning. I'll see you back here at 1.